Army had 340 in the opener, a blowout win against Middle Tennessee. Now they get ULM out of the Sun Belt with the call. Ben Holden, Ross Tucker, Tina Servasio as we head to Mikey Stadium. Enjoy the game, and we'll see you right back here at halftime. It is a beautiful West Point Saturday. Approximately 4,300 cadets making the march into Mikey Stadium to watch their quarterback, Christian Anderson, makes his second consecutive start. And the real McCoy, Santa McCoy, three touchdowns last week in their win over Middle Tennessee as it is a West Point Saturday and a beautiful one it is as the Black Knights welcome in out of the Sun Belt. The Warhawks of Louisiana Monroe and his college football presented by the Home Depot here today at West Point and Mikey Stadium. Great to see you once again for a second straight week. So good to be with you. Six feet apart, socially distanced from my partner, Ross Tucker. Seven years in the National Football League. My name is Ben Holden. Well, last week, Ross, it was a near flawless effort by Army from top to bottom. However, Jeff Monk and their coach said, we still got 100 things to fix. He's a coach at West Point. I get it. Well, of course he is, but we asked Louisiana Monroe coaches about it. They said they looked like these guys practice a lot. It was like their eighth game already. Unbelievable early season performance for Army. Yeah, and for ULM, there was even question they would play. We're going to get more on that from Tina when she joins us on the field, and they've got more change. Their quarterback, Caleb Evans, he was a great one for three years. Now Colby Suits running the show, and they got some weapons to work with, too. Well, that's the thing for Colby Suits, whether it's Colby Suits or the Jeremiah Hunt, the transfer from junior college, they have some awesome weapons. The Joshes, right? Running back Josh Johnson, he is a draftable grade from several NFL scouts with his low center of gravity. And then the tight end, Josh Peterson, yes, he is the son of the Eagles head coach. They split him out wide often. He is a great hands catcher, very smooth, very fluid. And look at the plays he made last year against Florida State. They've got some athletes. They certainly do. And Peterson tied for the national lead last year with nine touchdowns among tight ends. He's a special one. Speaking of special, Nate Woody, third defensive coordinator at Army in the last three seasons, and they come out and pitch a shutout, force four turnovers, as you're going to execute and show us in our Home Depot Do Project Smarter segment. And so much of it was disguise. Watch Malcolm Morrison. He's the nickelback. He'll look like he's covering the number three receiver man-to-man -man, and then break off. At the last second, drop him. He's actually playing zone. He undercuts the number two receiver to get the interception. Meanwhile, linebacker John Radigan up in the A-gap, makes it look like he's blitzing. Quarterback wants to get rid of the ball quickly. He breaks on it, intercepts it, takes it all the way to the house for a pick six. They had four turnovers, could have had a couple more. It was all the disguise of Woody. It was Jeff Munkin. He was the first guy to meet John Radigan when he came off the field. More on that as we move along. Seventh season for Munkin. 17 and 2 since 2017 here at Army. Matt Viator, fifth season at Louisiana Monroe. He's calling the plays this year. He hadn't done that since he was at McNeese State some years ago. His team in their first game here of the season. Beautiful West Point Saturday. You see the core of Canets. They have filed in approximately 4,300. No other fans allowed here at West Point today. And what a beautiful picture that is, as it always is, here along the banks of the Hudson River. Army will kick it away. Landon Salyers has it teed up. Deep men are Isaiah Phillips, number three, and Perry Carter, number 14. And this will be Phillips from the goal line. They've got some speed on that part of their team. And Phillips with a good start to the season for the Warhawks. Out to the 35. As I mentioned, Tina Servasio with us. Tina down in the field with a lot more on the Warhawks. Welcome, Tina. Uh, thank you, Ben. You know, ULM had to go through a lot to get to play here today. They had to stop all football activities on August 21st when nine players tested positive for COVID-19. Suspended practice again on August 27th when, the hur when Hurricane Laura hit. When the team resumed practice August 31st, they had one workout over an 11-day span. Then, September 2nd, shocked to hear the news. Defensive coordinator Mike Collins resigned, but tailback Josh Johnson tells me these shutdowns may have helped us, brought us together as a team. Yeah, we'll find out, Tina, and they like to do a lot of this. Quickly out of the hands of the quarterback, Colby Suits, getting his first career start here at ULM, and 
Ross, we don't know a lot about this young man, but what's your take on the strategy for Viator today with playing both of them? They want to get both these quarterbacks comfortable. 6'3", 240 is Suits. Hunt is 6'2", 245. They're big guys with big arms. They're not the runners that Caleb Evans was a year ago, so you'll see more RPOs than just straight zone reads. Well, Matt Viator talking earlier in the week as Josh Johnson gets to carry his first of the game about Suits. He said he's been waiting in the weeds, and we're ready to give him an opportunity as Army gets to stop there. Nicely done. Brings up third and five. John Radigan already Watch the run stunt right here. He's going to come around and be able to get in on this play. He had a huge game last week. Watch, he finds it. Sneaks in there past Fialoa. Man, Radigan. Jeff Munkin told us he loves him because he's a senior starter. Munkin didn't start till he was a senior. Radigan already making the most of this game as well. He is. ULM was 40% on third down a season ago. Their opener here in 2020. Suits got time. Forced out now. He'll tuck it under the right arm, takes the shot. Eric Smith was there. Also getting in there on the tackle was Andre Carter. And it's a good play on defense there on third down for Army here. Brings up a fourth and short right now. Well, they're starting to trot off now. I was going to say for a minute, they might be going for it. There was all kinds of time for suits. He just couldn't find anyone. He elected to tuck it away and creates a fourth and short situation. Very physical tackle there from both Smith and Carter. Fourth and short. I think Viator really thought about yeah. this, but it's a full two yards. That's tough to get against Army. I agree with the decision to punt here. I don't think you want to turn over in your own end this early in the game. Yeah, and you got to believe as they bring on their punter now to boot this away, Jared Porter, that he might have been thinking, is this punt nearly blocked about potentially going for it? Because when you play Army, and especially you look at what they did last week, because this is down around the 40. You don't get that many opportunities. But they boot it away, and Army will come out trotting out for the first time today after a 17-yard punt. Christian Anderson, that's what he did on the ground in his passing numbers. What else did you take away from him last week, Ross? I thought he was just really efficient. You could tell that he played a lot last year, including in the Army-Navy game, was smooth with all of his reads, made the right plays, threw it pretty well. And you can definitely tell how much more physically imposing he is. He gained 20 pounds during the quarantine. He said it was all the ground beef and macaroni his mom made him in the Bronx. Sounds delicious, by the way, right about now. I knew, know you are a food <laughs> enthusiast, and you perked up yesterday when we talked to him on that very topic. The handoff on the first play from scrimmage for the Black Knights to Sandon McCoy, fresh off a three-touchdown game last week, the second in his career. And up front, man, were they good? An offensive lineman's dream last week, Ross. They had 123 knockdowns on 68 plays. One per game is good. One and a half per game is the goal. They beat the goal, and the first time starting center, Connor Bishop, 20 knockdowns on only 46 snaps. Unreal. First time in his career, high school or college, albeit he's early in his career, as they get it to the perimeter. Hobbs with a stutter step in the Warhawk defense gets over there, but not before Hobbs able to pick up the first down just to finish that thought on Bishop. He hadn't started at center ever in his life. What a performance by him up front. Defensively for the Warhawks, Ross. The last four years have been one of the worst teams in the country against the run. They are going to be tested and then some today. Well, and Mason Hussman, the D tackle, is really the only guy up front that has a lot of experience. Their D coordinator, Scott Stoker, said for the other three guys getting their first playing time, he said, this will be a game they'll never forget <laughs> in many ways they hope the good way there's a nice play on defense turned in right there excellent job of staying home there by the linebacker Travion Webster some good early signs here for Louisiana Monroe Travion Webster right side of your screen he's gonna defeat the block by Brandon Walters oh my goodness mm -hmm. knocked him flat on his butt before he made that play wow Travion Webster. Yep. You can tell he's been itching to play. Senior out of Longview, Texas. He's played the same spot all four years on that defense for ULM. He made a solid play there. Limiting Army to just a yard. There's Anderson near side. Slithers inside. And he's finished off at the 40 yard line. Coming over to make the stop there was Brandon Nettles off the end. Third and short coming up, Ross. Take a look at the B back. That's the fullback. Keyshawn Johnson tackles him, and there was huge room there then 
for Anderson. And Army quickly snaps the ball. They may have to measure for this. They needed to get just inside of the 39, almost, a, or the 40 to the 39, almost a full yard. They're going to go here. There's no hesitation whatsoever. We talk about it often, but Army has an analytic service they use that tells them in every situation whether or not to go for it on fourth down and fourth and inches. They're definitely going, usually the fullback or a quarterback sneak. Army one for one last week against Middle Tennessee. Anderson gives it off. There it is, right on Q Ross's. Sandon McCoy bangs his way inside of the 35 yard line, dropped at the 32 yard line. And we're seeing once again the right side of the line. These guys, that's the guys that they want to run behind. Reader, Hunter, so much experience. They've both been starting since their sophomore year when Army has to have it, Ben. And they've got that unbalanced line to the right again. When they have to have it, that's the direction they want to go, the right side. Cade Bernard's in it. The beat back to fullback spot. Anderson thinks to him. Anderson pick up of about five yards on the carry. Sweeney in on the tackle. Kilo Sweeney. Good one on the back end for the ULM defense. Man, there is some pads popping already. Yeah, there are. And without having a huge crowd, Ben, we can hear it. I know, I know all the cadets are here, but we can hear some pads popping already in this game. Eighth play coming up here on this opening march, as I like to say, for Army. Jacoby Buchanan, the human wrecking ball, they call him. Just over the 25 yard line. Armed Forces football is proudly supported by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. So, third and a long one, call it, Ross? Yep, and it's obviously four down territory. Yep. It almost always is, unless there'd be a huge loss on this play. And again, almost always the fullback or the quarterback, when they have Buchanan in there, they know he'll fall forward. Yep, 260 pounds, and he didn't even have to fall there. Picking up that first down to the 23 yard line as we approach eight minutes remaining in a rapidly moving first quarter here. It's always rapidly moving when Army plays yep. because the clock never stops. Never stops. Buchanan nine for 33 last week. Average 3.7 a carry. Got a lot of playing time in the second half. Sandon McCoy really only played the first half of the game. We got a timeout here. I think they're going to measure it. I thought he got it pretty easily. I did too. From up here. They are going to measure a referee for the second straight week here is Mike Roach from nearby Albany, New York. They bring the sticks out, as you said, Ross. Looked like he had to get to the 28. He got to the 27 and a half. Or, I'm sorry, the 23. He got yes. to the 22 and a half. Oh, yeah. Here's Mike Roach saying that's a first down. Move the chains. They should just ask us. We have a better view up here. <laughs> Could have saved everybody a bunch of time. The eye in the sky. Four cadets, they're in masks. Zero positive test here on post, as they call it at West Point, going back to June 1. And I was thinking about this yesterday, Ross. You know, as good as Army played, there's a lot of reasons that they played as good as they did, but think about it. The men and women here have not left post since June 1. There's a lot of pent up enthusiasm and uh, adrenaline in there, I suppose, right? Absolutely. And Army's offense hasn't gotten on the perimeter yet either. We might see that soon. Keep your eyes on Tyrell Robinson, number 21, was he's in the game. They go right up the gut here and a good push up front by the Warhawk defense. You saw Austin Holly, 15, there with his hand in the air. Keyshawn Johnson credited with a tackle for their defense right They're there. They're doing a pretty good job on the fullback dives. Those are the B backs, they call them. Mm -hmm. And so far, that Louisiana Monroe, ULM, they'll take that. Keyshawn Johnson coming off the edge, that's his responsibility. Usually the free safety will have the quarterback, but the interior four or five guys, they're responsible for the fullback. So second down and eight. And Anderson bobbled the snap, had to fall on it. So it's going to bring up a third and long here for Brent Davis, the offensive coordinator in the Army offense. Two things, Ben. Number one, that's killer for Army's offense yes. because it gets them totally off schedule. Let's take a look at it. And it looked like Bishop was a little bit short on the snap. Remember, he never played center right. any level of football until starting last week. He's been a center for three weeks and looked to me 
I usually blame that on the quarterbacks, trust me, but that one looked like Bishop <laughs> shorted it a little bit. All right, so third and nine, they call it now for Army. Anderson's got to look to the air now on the run. Anderson inside the 20, got a good block, gets down near the 10, and Christian Anderson, Christian Anderson losing a shoe there, the puts the wheel back on. Hunter Smith forced him out, but a first down for Army. What a luxury it is to have a quarterback that can run because Connor Bishop misses his block. Pointer's in there right away. Anderson had to scramble and he got a nice block downfield from one of his buddies, but that play was done. I mean, they, were, they wanted to throw the ball and Pointer got early pressure. Anderson had to run and was able to get the first down. Yep, the freshman out of Jonesboro, Arkansas, Kevin Pointer. First and goal now. Anderson left side fake the pitch out there. And he'll take it down to the six yard line here with 540 and counting left here in the opening quarter. Today's red zone brought to you by our good friends at Verizon. What Army did last week, I mean, they were flawless. They had six possessions on offense. The last was for about 70 seconds to end the game, and they scored five touchdowns. They didn't miss a beat. Kind of surprised Sandon McCoy not in the game at fullback. Yes. This is usually his territory. Anderson six for 30 carrying the football so far. Going to carry it again. Good job again up front. Really good job up front. Tackle made there by Seth Mason. Outstanding work out of him. So third and goal coming up here, Ross. ULM's doing a nice job chasing some of these plays down. 94, Mason stunts inside, fights off the block of Reeder. You know, that's one where Reeder's got to be, it was zoned to the right. So Peyton Reeder's got to be responsible for that gap to the right. When ULM slanted, he wasn't able to make the block. Credit ULM for the design up front and Mason for making the play. Third and goal, 15th play of the drive here for Army. Christian Anderson got a blocker in front. Anderson cuts inside, touchdown! What a great block on the goal line there to allow Anderson to find his way into the end zone. The block applied there by Luke McCleary. Army marches in, capping a 15-play drive to score the first points of the day. It was the counter. Watch these guys on this side after he fakes it to the right. Watch this. This is awesome. They pull the left guard, left tackle, seal inside. McCleary, get on the outside, get on the block on Sweeney. Anderson cut it up inside. Beautiful play call by Brent Davis. Totally fooled ULM with the counter. That was the right call at the right time against an over-aggressive defense. Here's Sal. Here's the point after up and true out of the hole to Brooks Jose. The snap from Kyle O'Connor. And Army, 15-play march to begin this football game. McCleary, the key block. Anderson takes it in. 7-0 Army. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network, presented by the Home Depot. College Football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by The Home Depot. How doers get more done. By Verizon, the network more people rely on. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by The Exchange, welcoming home veterans to their exchange shopping benefits. It never gets old seeing those pictures and those images and it's even more special when you have the seat Ross and I have up here in the booth. I mean, it is the general public not in here. It is still a spectacular pregame presentation. Jeff Monk and squad took it 15 plays, 60 yards, 813. Anderson capped it off with a five yard touchdown. It was eight for 36 and the score on the drive. But going back, Ross, the bigger thing there was was that punt of just 17 yards by ULM. Yeah, that hurt because it was fourth and short. They elected the punt, and then they got a bad punt afterwards. I actually thought ULM did some pretty decent things defensively there. They made Army work for it, but Army still scored. Yep, here's Isaiah Phillips. He can fly at a 35-yarder to start the game. Took a shot, and he's dropped near the 23-yard line. Well, we got a chance. Want to remind you tomorrow at 6 Eastern, get ready for the most intense eight seconds in sports as the best bull riders in the world head to Montana for the PBR Ariat Invitational right here on CBS Sports Network. So our second look at ULM's offense and their starting quarterback here today, Colby Suits. Josh Anderson, number eight there. He is an outstanding back, was 13th in the country last year, averaging 108 yards a game. They want to get him going and work in those passes to Peterson and some of their 
high end receivers with speed and skill. There is Johnson. Drags a couple to the 26 yard line. So that offensive line up front, Ross, four starters gone from last season. That's 127 career starts gone. But who do you like up front among this group? Well, you see Zach Bro, the center. It's the guy next to him, TJ Fialoa, the right guard. He's got 23 starts in his career, broke his ankle last year, was able to get a redshirt year. His coaches think he's a future NFL player. Yep, the bell cow up front for them. Out of the gun, suits into the bread basket of Johnson getting in through the left side of the line. Good penetration turned in there by Army to bring up a third and long. Eric Smith involved in the stop. Also getting in there was Nolan Cockrell. Watch Eric Smith. Amadeo West goes out. Eric Smith hits it right there. This is a run blitz. Watch. West goes outside for a reason. Eric Smith fills the void. ULM doesn't have anybody to block him. Really good design by Army D coordinator Nate Woody again. Eric Smith, the hammer. He can really play this game. He is a good one. And a long line of linebackers here. Suits to the air, deflected, and incomplete looking there. The 34 yard line for his main man, Josh Peterson. It'll bring up a fourth and nine. Cannot go three and out no. against Army like this. You just can't. And they did a good job getting pressure. It's five guys, and they stunt up front. Amadeo West gets in there. Here comes Eric Smith off the edge. And the nose guard, Nolan Cockrell, with his left hand right there. He's a first-time starter as well. Had a great game last week. Jeff Munkin pointed him out to us and already off to another good start today. Yeah, he was raving about him, the way he played, the physical nature of his game. Porter on for the second time at a 17 yarder and Army brings the heat. This one a much better punt and there's going to be a flag. They ran into the return man Tyrell Robinson. There's two flags because they ran into the punter as well. You don't see that very often. You don't. Mike Roach our referee may have a do over here coming up. Discussing for the back judge there. We'll get the verdict from it here. There are two fouls on the play. Running into the kicker on the defense. Kick catch interference on the kicking team number 11. Those fouls are offset. Replay fourth down. There you go. I'm telling you right now, Ben. ULM has almost gotten both of these punts blocked. Mm -hmm. Take a look at it. <laughs> Just barely miss it. It's sophomore linebacker Fabrice Vaughn. Yes. The kick catch interference is on 17, 1 7. That penalty on Jaquan Bloomfield, one of their wideouts, and he knew it. So we'll redo this fourth and nine. And Army's kind of come after both punts. Let's yeah. see if they do it one more time. But the first two, they've come after, and they've been very, very close to getting a block. ULM better be careful. Negated a 54-yard punt there because of the penalties by Porter. Not this time. They drop back, and Porter skies one. Fair caught at the 39-yard line by Tyrell Robinson with 2.48 remaining here in the opening quarter. And we'll take a timeout, step aside after a 37-yard punt. Army's got it for the second time here today, leading 7-0. Now that Ross Tucker is a face mask right there. <laughs> <laughs> the inside of the core cadets approximately 4300 here. You got to take away you know 100 or so part of the football program and it's time now for our view of the core brought to you by M core. Great to see them in here. It was great to have them here last week. They'll be here next week. And it's a release for them too. To get out of the barracks for a few hours, it is a requirement at West Point. You have to attend the football games, and they are here. So Army for the second time today with the football. How about this number, Ross? Army's got three drives of 15 plays or more in five, not even five full quarters of football. And two 19-play drives last week and a 
potentially big time saving tackle and a penalty flag comes in as Hobbs had the rock and he was dragged down horse collared by Austin Holly. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, defense number 15. 15 yard penalty added to the end of the run, first down. It was actually an unbelievable play by Hall. You watch him make the tackle right hand right there. Yep. And the rule is you don't actually have to have your hand inside the shoulder pads for it to be called a horse collar. Mm -hmm. Even if you're on the nameplate or the number there, it's really the act of pulling the guy down from behind like that that causes the penalty. That's right. 11 yard pickup plus the penalty for Hobbs. On the outside, look out, Tyrell Robinson. This young man is something special. I haven't seen a player like on this Army team like him in nine seasons here. He is a different level player, Ross. It was the first time they'd able to, been able to get him the ball. You'll see him come around in motion. His Army's going quickly. The pitch to Robinson. First time Army got the edge today. 25-yard pickup. And he shot delivered on Anderson, the quarterback there. And they blow this play quickly. The previous play is under further review. So Robinson, who went up that sideline, has to be what they're looking at, right? Yeah, they're going to look and see if Tyrell Robinson stepped outside mm -hmm. when he went off the block of Michael Roberts, the junior receiver. Roberts gave him a great downfield block. Robinson went outside of it. There's a question as to whether or not he stepped on the white. There's Roberts is blocking. That right foot right there. Yeah, I'd say right there at about the 14 yard line. It looked to me like yeah. his right foot. Maybe got a better angle here. Watch yeah. his right foot. Right there. Twice there. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know about the first one, Ben, but I'm pretty sure the second one, okay. he touched the white line. I think he's okay there. That one, that I think one got. There. Yep, you're right. Man, he's close. He is very close. I never understood how running backs and receivers are so good at knowing just where the out of bounds is Sensing typically it. and keeping their. I mean, if my big feet were running down that sideline, oh. I would have stepped out of bounds oh. long ago. <laughs> But they typically know right where it is. Left foot's good. Right foot still good there. That's Left good. foot still good. That right foot at the 16 is questionable. That and one at the too. 14 and a half, it yes. clearly looks like it was out. It sure does. Our verdict is coming here as Mike Roach has the headset off. And we'll get the word from him after they took a look at this. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. It'll be Army's ball at the 11-yard line. First down. So the play stands, and the freshman, Tyrell Robinson, who last week led Army in rushing with 94 yards. Middle Tennessee had 75 as a team, man, on nine carries. So what they're saying there, the booth operator, the replay official, did not feel like it was conclusive that that right foot stepped out on the 14 and a half. I think he did, but I'm okay with them saying that it wasn't indisputable visual evidence that he stepped out. 24 yard pickup for Tyrell Robinson. So Army set up again here. Anderson slithers his way inside of the five down to the two yard line, setting him up. A second and short. And when they have somebody on the ropes, Ben, they like to go. And then this is typically fullback or quarterback zone. Sandon McCoy has got it, and he is shy of the end zone inside of the one yard line. They had 21 Tyrell Robinson there going in motion as a decoy. Thought they blew that one dead a little early, but when they get people on the ropes, they get down near the goal line. Ruin on the field is a touchdown. Okay. McCoy in second effort had to have got McCoy in and Sandon McCoy now with four touchdowns on the season. 
It's fullback belly to the left. He gets it, runs right off McCleary, gets hit hard at about the half yard line, keeps spinning. He's not down. I mean, not, no body parts are down there. Tremendous second and third effort by Santa McCoy. I actually thought they blew it dead. I did too. There and was they, no signal. And remember, Ben, they have electronic they whistles do. this year. Yes. And you wonder if some of the guys heard the electronic whistles and stopped and yep. some didn't. Because there were some other ULM guys just standing around while McCoy kept fighting. That could have been an electronic issue. Yeah, you're very well right on that. Salyers on for the point after, and Landon Salyers makes it 14 0 out of the hole to Brooks Ose. So the real McCoy with his fourth touchdown of the season, not even out of the first quarter, it's 14 0 Army already. Army two drives, two touchdowns. They lead ULM 14-0 here, late stages of the opening quarter. While we got an opportunity, we'll take a look now at our Geico difference makers today. And up on the marquee first, the freshman Tyrell Robinson for Army. Unbelievable performance debut a week ago. He is electric. You said it, Ben. He's just different. They haven't had a guy like him here in a long time. And for ULM, they've got a special one in the secondary. I don't know how many passes he's going to be able to pick. He's going to have to be smart tackling, but Corey Strotter's a good one. He is excellent. He's another NFL prospect, was a USA Today and Pro Football Focus All-American last year. He had an FBS low 13.5 passer rating against him. I saw that. Had a pick six of 57 yards down at Dope Campbell Stadium. September the 7th with ULM. Some may remember that game. I remember it once I started doing work last week. It took Florida State to overtime and lost on a point after. And later in their season, they had a chance to become bowl eligible. The same thing bit them. They couldn't hit a field goal. It would have been a walk-off, and they ended up 5-7 and seven a season ago. Imperative now, Ross Tucker, that ULM gets something going on offense here to get some kind of momentum for their sake. Well, and even if they just let their defense get a breather, look at the bottom of the screen. Time of possession, already 19 plays, and they've all been on the ground for Army here still in the first quarter. They need to at least move the chains, get a couple of first downs. I think the easiest way to do that will be the quick passing game. You know, Suits has a good arm. Get the ball out wide to one of their good receivers against these inexperienced corners for Army and let them try to make a play. So here he goes to work here with 100 seconds remaining in the quarter. Josh Johnson, right side, good run out of him. And, you know, I loved what he said to us on our call earlier in the week. He talked about having the opportunity and being grateful to be playing. He mentioned Jarrett Patterson, a young man I've seen. You and I saw him. We did a Buffalo game a couple of years ago, who I believe is a next level player like Johnson. And he said, look, it's for guys like that that we're out here playing for. And I echo those sentiments as a broadcaster. It is a privilege to be here doing these games. Well, and the other thing is Johnson's already graduated. Yep. So he could have transferred. He had a bunch of opportunities, mm -hmm. but he said he wanted to stay loyal to ULM. Yeah, and that's rare these days. That transfer portal gets worn out. Here he is again, trying to wear off the Army defense, but he can't. Nice job on the tackle by Radigan right there. And let's get down to Tina quickly. Tina. Well, Josh Johnson during quarantine and these shutdowns, he said he wanted to take advantage of it, but he didn't have a fancy gym at home. He had one set of 40 pound dumbbells. He said he used them in all sorts of ways. He really wanted to build up his durability this year. Ran a lot as well because he wants that endurance, guys. Big, strong, sturdy customer is Johnson. ULM 0 for 2 on third down, trying to convert here with less than 30 seconds remaining in the quarter, down 14-0. Thinking they'll give the ball to Johnson here. He already got the ball in the first two plays. Getting him heated up, trying to anyways. And right you are, Ross. And second effort, Eric Smith on his back. The spot I'm seeing, he's got it. What are you seeing over there, partner? Yep, he's got it. And I'm telling you right now, all three of those runs mm -hmm. were mainly him, Ben. Yep. I mean, they were not all that well blocked, but his effort breaking tackles is going to give his defense a breather. And they'll get the end of the quarter, which is nice as well. Two years ago, came to ULM as a walk-on. Now a scholarship guy trying to get something going for his team. End of the first quarter, Army on the home field on top, 14-0. That'll do it for the quarter. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network. Presented proudly by the Home Depot. Today's installment of Army's Greatest Legends is brought to you by The Exchange, and we take a look at Army fullback Felix Doc Blanchard. 
75 years ago, the man known as Mr. Inside won the Heisman Trophy, becoming the first junior to ever do so, leading the Black Knights to the second of three straight national titles. I feel like John Facenda should be narrating this. <laughs> I mean, look at these pictures, Ross. Amazing. Well, two things that jump out to me there. Number one, they're all fans. Gonna have to correct you. I didn't know his first name was Felix. Felix. Oh, I'm so going there. Yeah. When you said Felix, yeah. I'm like, no, Ben, it's Doc Blanchard. It's Doc Blanchard. <laughs> and, Felix. And I'll tell you this. Who's so, Felix? As we welcome you back in, or if you're just joining us here for the start of the first second, that is Ross Tucker. My name is Ben Holden. Tina Servasio down on the field. Bill Thayer, our producer today. Matt Plundo, our director. Tom Wicks, our AD, and all of our great crew. As Suits takes a shot downfield, got him in. It is caught and tripped up and saving the touchdown. It was caught there by Bloomfield, their fastest guy, and a great job of making the stop there by Cameron Jones, or they're on the board. ULM, bottom of your screen, they're going right on the football. It's just a deep post. He flies by Cameron Jones, the backup corner. It was time for ULM to take a shot. Certainly was. They needed that to begin this quarter. And My time for an injured player. Enemy player slow to get up. You hear the word from Mike Roach, our referee today. 49-yard pass play from Suits to Bloomfield. As they tend to Quabina Bonsu. He is, as they say in the football world, Ross, got quite a motor up front. I don't think the ULM coaches are very happy about that because they're trying to figure mm -hmm. out how a guy can run 50 yards downfield right. to get ready, but they're going to hurry up. They want to snap the ball, and then he gets hurt. I think ULM's a little suspicious of that. But he's flexing his elbow and he's got a brace on that elbow. So it might have been as easy as something happened on the play before. He ran down because he, he knew ULM wanted to go on the football, but that elbow kept bothering him. So they'll take Bonsu off. He'll walk off there. You see under his own power. And Matt Viator, ULM head coach. Nine and four in openers, three and one at ULM. This team was five and seven a season ago, four and four in the Sun Belt. And as Tina, if you weren't with us, addressed in our open or early on in the broadcast, this program has been through a lot. They had to shut down due to COVID. Then they had to deal with a hurricane. I was talking with one of their radio folks at the hotel this morning, and he said there's another hurricane. They're projecting it could come to that part of Louisiana again. So they have been through a ton. First play for ULM inside of Army territory, and Suit swings it out. And the skill guy's hands on the outside. Good pitch and catch there, and it's reeled in over there by Chandler Whitfield, the freshman out of Zachary, Louisiana. I'd like to see them do even more of that. Yeah. You know, their advantage, I believe, even though the Joshes are excellent players, Johnson the running back, Peterson the tight end, Army is hurting at the cornerback spot. They are. Get their elite athletes out in space, see if they can break a tackle and, and go the distance. Yep. Don't have their full complement last week. Both starters out. Javari Bordeaux is available, but only if he is needed in an emergency situation. They go on the ground here to Johnson. Is this here coming up, Ross, on third down where you look for big number 86, Josh Peterson, that tight end that's so good? Absolutely, but he hasn't. I don't think he's been in the last couple plays. It's still number 88, Lamb. Tyler Lamb, his backup that's out there. I haven't seen yeah. Peterson the last three plays. The coaches were very clear. Here's he's their number one guy, and a nice job, meanwhile, by Ryan Duran, a backup D lineman for Army. ULM one for three on third down. They need four here. Man to man coverage at the top, uh, Ben, if they want it. They look that way, and pressure comes, and Suits is dropped. They get through with a pressure. Johnny Nation, they call him. John Radigan, like he was shot out of a cannon with a huge play for the Army defense. Man, these linebacker blitzes are getting home for Army. Watch Radigan right here. They're going to run a stunt, and he hits it. Watch right in front of him. He's going to let everything unfold in front of him. And then he hits it right there. See, to me, that's a mental error right there, Ben. I mean, if you get a linebacker, he's the middle linebacker, he's up on the ball. Someone for ULM has to account for that. That's a mental error. Loss of 11. Here's Hughes on to attempt a 37-yarder. And Army gets a piece of it. And ULM, after a good-looking drive, their best of the game, gets nothing. A goose egg still remains on the board with 12.26 to go in the second quarter. 
That is so deflating. Yep. I mean, you have a nice drive. You have a deep post for over 50 yards. You get all the way down in the scoring position. You have a chip shot field goal, and you're not able to execute up front. Serving up. 26 remaining here in the second quarter. ULM put together their best drive of the day so far, but Johnny Nation, John Radigan right up the middle getting Colby suits there, Ross. Nearly yanked the ball out of there, and then they lined up for a field goal, and that didn't go so well. No, it didn't. The right tackle, Sam Williams, right there. You always need to protect your inside first. He's got both gaps, but the inside's the priority. He gets knocked back by Nolan Cockrell and Ryan Duran. Looked like Cockrell got a piece of it. Williams not stout enough at the point of attack. Whenever you're on field goal or extra point, your inside gap is your priority. Obviously, it's closest to the kicker in the football. Army back to work. Santa McCoy bursting up the middle. It's all the way through the second level to the third, and they drop him at the 36. Move the chains for Army. Good way to start. A pick up a 16. Excellent block by the center. Connor Bishop again. And McCoy able to break it for a pretty long run there. 15 carries, 50 yards, and three touchdowns last week. Army already with four runs of 10 or more yards in this game. Keyshawn Johnson in there on the stop on Christian Anderson. Really well done there by ULM's defense. Kevin Pointer was all over the fullback. Anderson had to pull it off. In fact, Pointer hit Anderson right at the mesh point. He bounced off, and then Keyshawn Johnson was able to finish him off. That gives him a chance. When you only give up a couple yards on first down, it gives you a chance. So you mentioned Pointer twice. We got flags on the play here. We'll wait till Roach gives us the word. Army had too many. Substitution infraction yep. on the offense, breaking the huddle with 12 players. It's five, five yard penalty to second down. Jeff Munkin, I'd normally say spit and fire, but not with a mask on. He's still getting into his guys. He loves this place. He loves this program. Nothing gets him more frustrated than yes. pre-snap penalties like that. Mm -hmm. And those penalties hurt any offense in any level of football, but they are typically absolutely killer for Army because it makes it a lot more difficult for them to get in fourth and go for it territory with it being second and 13. Wouldn't be surprised if we see Anderson throw it for the first time today. Trying to stay on schedule, running this triple option attack. Anderson instead gives it off, off the gut, and there goes Kate Bernard inside of ULM territory, tripped up inside of the 35-yard line. First down, the march continues for Army. Army's going right back on the football again. Watch Barnard. It's just a fullback dive. Terrific job by Artis Hobbs, the wingback, and he just keeps going. He got lost behind that pile. 36 yard pickup. Anderson, his right foot stuck in the ground pretty good. Slipped a little bit there, but able to maintain his composure there. Good pickup there on first down. Armed Forces football is proudly supported today by Surf Pro. Man, there, there's a there's some killer plays here for for ULM Ben. I mean the sack on third down, the block field goal, and then you get him in second and 13, and you let Barnard go right up the middle for 30 plus yards. Second and six. Anderson, good job, good pursuit there. He had four white jerseys, five white jerseys getting the football. I think he football, lost the ball. And, yeah, no whistle. There was no whistle. No, there wasn't. And that's huge. If they've got the ball, they do. Still discussing no indication from the officials yet. I think these electronic whistles are an issue. Yeah, I do too. That's the second or third yep. time in this game a bunch of guys were standing around yep. thinking the play was over. Giving Mason Hussman credit for the fumble recovery if it stands. Going on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. It'll be Louisiana Monroe's first down. So they force the turnover, and Mason Hussman gets the job. You mentioned him earlier, a fifth year senior, comes away with a football. That is huge for the Warhawks. Take a look at it. Anderson. Oh, that ball was out early. Stripped, yeah. I mean, you know what's crazy? Nobody realized it at, at first. But that ball was out way early, right there. I mean, it was out when he did the fake pitch right there. Well, so after a couple of bad plays, ULM finally gets a break. Now they got to do something with it. 
I've been given th Rocky Stadium. The last time First Army's given up points, Ross. Last December, with a minute 42 left in the fourth quarter, they turned the ball over there, and now it's into the hands of Jeremy Hunt. Matt Viator planned on playing them both. This young man comes out slinging it. Intended target over there was Josh Peterson, the tight end for the Warhawks. I don't know that I've ever heard a coach say what Matt Viator told us about Jeremy Hunt playing with Colby Suits. He said we didn't have enough practices to decide who the quarterback would right, be. Right, right. And it's the truth. I mean, you know, we talked about it earlier. They had one practice over a 10-day period. So while they're in non-conference play here a little bit, he's going to let these guys try to figure it out. First FBS game for Jeremy Hunt. Very good in his previous stops in the junior college ranks. Keeps it here to the 35-yard line. 35 coming up. Tackle made by Cedric Cunningham, who had a great week last week. Hunt had one quick read there. It wasn't there. He saw space in front of him, and he took it. Third and five gives them a lot of possibilities. You can do anything quick to the outside. You still have Peterson, who's really yet to be a factor. He's the wing back to the right. Wouldn't be surprised if he gets a pretty good matchup there with how they have him placed in the wing position. ULM, one for four on third down. Hunt with time, near side, flings it up there. Caleb John on the coverage, and Bloomfield came up a little bit gimpy when he came down there on the right leg, brings up fourth down. Caleb John rises to the occasion again in man-to-man -man coverage. They kept Peterson in to block. He's been doing a lot of that in the first half so far, but John, who's typically a backup, mm -hmm. but they've been banged up. They've had some suspensions at corner. And John faring well there in man-to-man -man coverage. The Army coaches were a little bit concerned about that. Solid play there on a very good receiver. Jared Porter on to punt again, averaging 27 yards a punt, 17 and then 37 in his previous two. Army comes again. Three out of the four times he's punted, they have really brought the heat. Porter gets a good, good bounce here. This will die at the 21-yard line. 8.55 to play in this second quarter, a 44-yard punt from Porter. Jeff Munkin and his guys up two touchdowns with the football, and we get you back. I chose to enroll at United States Military Academy because I wanted to have the opportunity to serve and to uh, be a leader in this country. Also, having the ability to play FBS football and seeing this brotherhood. One of the most important reasons coming here, I wanted to have the opportunity to lead the soldiers in the Army. Time now to take a look at today's Mercedes-Benz player profile. It's a young man out of the Bronx. You see some of the particulars on him, that 80-yard touchdown pass. You and I were here for that last year, Ross, to Artis Hobbs, and said he has no, fa no military in his family. He wanted to serve his country, and got an opportunity to come here and doing some good things here, both on the field and in the military for our country. Anderson, nice piece of running here. Cuts back inside of the 40 and drop. Just shy of the 41. Let's get down to Tina. During quarantine, Christian Anderson went home to the Bronx. And as you know, New York City was the epicenter of the coronavirus. He said it was scary. He did not leave his house for a month, and his parents got the virus. Anderson said his mother, Denise, and his stepfather, Robert, had COVID-19. They were sick, but they never had to be hospitalized. When they were finally better, they just spent that family time together they don't normally get to do. Yeah, and these Army... The men and women here at the academy, they've all really been shut down since March, and it's continued for them on the post. As Anderson putting together a, a demo reel, as we'd say in the business here, after a 21-yard gain, does that. Moves the chains again, does Christian Anderson. He a 16, Ross. And Ben, that was a broken play. The timing was not right between Tyrell Robinson and Christian. Look, he wants to pitch to yeah. Tyrell Robinson. Yeah. Not there. <laughs> he makes Mason miss, tuck it away. Wow, that is the second time in this game that Army has essentially had a broken play or a missed assignment that Anderson has been able to make up for with his legs. Army approaching 200 on the ground. Anderson carrying for the 15th time here. Took a heavy shot as the stop was made there by Austin Holly, one of their safeties, a senior out of Gladewater, Texas. 
Brent Davis told us that the free safety position, which is what Hawley plays, really tough to get to against these 4-2-5 defenses. There's five defensive backs out there, so they don't really have anybody to account for the free safety, Hawley. So he's responsible. He's way back here, Hawley. He's responsible for the quarterback either way. So he's right over the middle. Whichever way the quarterback goes, Hawley is attacking. Anderson, 15 carries, not going to go there, but wide open, missed the target. He was looking for that outstanding freshman they love so much in wideout, Isaiah Alston. That was six. He comes up incomplete, though. And they fooled Hawley. Hawley is so excited to try to stop her. Watch Hawley. He's so excited to try to stop the run. He steps up and lets the post go right behind him. Free safety's response. Watch, steps up. I got to go get. Uh-oh. Yeah. He didn't realize it. Really a poor throw by Anderson. That should have been a touchdown. And Anderson's probably kicking himself right now. They are very, very high on Isaiah Alston. Maybe they go back to him here on third and seven. And they go up the gut, and they're going to spot him at the 37. They need the 33 to get the first down. It's fourth and four now, kind of no man's land here. Really unique position on the field. Too far for a field goal, and if you punt it, unless you think you can get it inside the 10, you're probably only getting about a net 17 yards. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if Army goes for it here. Bringing on Robinson. Roberts has checked into the game as well. And number 15, Raheem Murphy, at one of those slot back positions. So they're going to line up here, it looks like, and go for it on fourth and four. I mean, I saw him go against Air Force two years ago at midfield with 30 seconds left in the game on fourth and one. Not surprised at all. This play is blown dead before it ever takes place. Before the snap, Army takes its first time out of the half. So there you go. Timeout for Army. They've got two left with 6.14 remaining in the half. All three for ULM in the timeout department here. And we're going to take one as well. We'll step aside here at Mikey Stadium. Army on the move up 14-0. 6.14 to play until halftime. Army fourth and four. They lined up before the break if you're just joining us to go for it. Took a timeout. Talking things over. Anderson and the offense back on. They're in no man's land. Ross, what would you do if you're running the offense? I would go for it. I think this is the right decision. Like I said, I mean, if you punt it, the odds are it's going to go in the end zone and you gain a net 17 yards. They haven't really given up anything to ULM so far. And if they can find a way to get a first down here, they could really put a hurting on ULM, maybe even run the clock out here in the first half and get another score. We have seen that movie before. Here we go, fourth down and four. They need the 33-yard line. Anderson, pitch outside. Robinson doesn't get there. Great job. Outstanding work on the outside by Jabari Johnson getting the start today because Tanner Glass unable to go for them. Tyler Glass, I beg your pardon. Tyler Glass unable to go in a great play, turning it over on downs for ULM. And Ben, the timing was off again. I mean, yep. the, the pitch relationship between Anderson and Robinson was not how it was supposed to be. He wanted to pitch it earlier. What a job there by Johnson to chase him down from behind. ULM getting it done. CBS, and that's not Tom Brady. That's Cam Newton, their starter. Unbelievable. I mean, I'm, I'm fascinated to watch the Patriots and the Bucks all year long. See how the Patriots and Josh McDaniels use Cam Newton. Well, Colby Suits is back in the game at quarterback. Jeremy Hunt came in for a series. Suits started, flings one. There's Peterson, got past the first down marker. And Josh Peterson, an 11-yard pickup there. Well, that's stud tight end for ULM. Finally, Peterson, he was in the wing position again. He's just going to run right down the field. Broughton realized it, but it was a little too late. You see Broughton, the safety, pounding the ground because he saw it coming just a, a hair late there. The son of Eagles head coach and, well, Northeast Louisiana alum. That's what the school was called when Doug Peterson played there. Well-schooled, well-taught Josh Johnson, the other Josh, pickup of a yard. He had... Some productive carries a couple of drives back, but it 
didn't result in anything for the Warhawks offense. And I think we need to reemphasize just what these guys did a year ago. I mean, yeah. Peterson was all conference, hit a conference high, 43 catches, 567 yards, and nine touchdowns at tight end. The nine touchdowns, Ross, tied for the national lead. Right. And then Johnson, all he did was average almost 6.5 yards to carry. He had eight runs over 30 yards. Yep, one of four running backs in the country last year. Six more, six or more yards a carry with 200 or more carries. This time they go to the air to Josh Johnson. And it brings up a third down coming up here. Gain of seven. Suits has an arm, man. He does. I he mean, can, did you see he that? Sling it. that yeah. was a frozen rope right there. <laughs> Johnson ran a little bit of a wheel route, and Suits just put it right on him. And a 40 Texas. Third and two. What are you thinking here, Ross? Well, One pass. What do they do? Well, I think the first thing you're thinking, Ben, is that this is four down territory. Sure. I mean, at this point, you almost have to. So my guess is out of the pistol set that this will be a run to Johnson. Suits is five for six for 86. There's a flag on the field. Ball start. Offense, number 88. It's a five yard penalty. Third down. And that's on one of their tight ends. That's on Tyler Lamb, the senior out of Metairie, Louisiana. It's just such a killer. It is. I mean, you get third and two because of the nice throw by Suits to Johnson. Lambs to the right of the screen. I didn't see him move there. Maybe he flinched right before that. Well, third and seven coming up. Four minutes remaining. Cora Cadets in the house for the second straight week here at Mikey. One for five are the Warhawks of ULM. Suits got plenty of time. Zings one down the middle, finding the seam there and getting into space and getting the first down was Josh Peterson. They're finally getting the ball to Peterson and Suits, you said it, all kinds of time. And when he has time, he can deliver a really nice ball there. Peterson works the middle of the field extremely well, lit up Florida State a year ago he certainly did in that game six catches 85 yards and a touchdown interesting on Peterson talked about his dad and all that and his dad played at the same school he was a golfer until the last couple of years of high school his best round is 66 he can play Johnson to the outside puts a foot in the ground and gets around Cunningham and a good piece of running there by Josh Johnson setting up first and goal at the nine for ULM Army brought pressure off the edge, but they didn't go flat enough. Fabrice Boyne needs to be flat down the line. Johnson was able to sneak back out inside, and ULM's in business. The Josh is indeed taking over on this drive for ULM. Pick up a 25 there. Suits into the bread basket of Johnson. Takes on the defender head on and shoved him back a couple of yards, did Josh Johnson, as we're inside of three minutes to go, all three timeouts for ULM. You'll see Johnson, not a lot of room to run here, so he just puts his head down erratic, and wow. I mean, that's quite the collision there. Sure is. And you're right, Ben, ULM taking their time. All three timeouts, yep. ideally here, they score a touchdown and only leave a little bit of time left on the clock for Army. The good news is Army doesn't run a very good two-minute drill. So even if they just get under two minutes, it's a pretty good sign for ULM, although Army's late to get a guy out there. Hustling to get off. Suits. Play fake now looks near side. End zone. Flag down in the corner. And it is caught in the corner. Malik Jackson with a touchdown grab. There is a flag down. I'm not sure Army got their 12th guy off the field. That's my thought too, Ross. Substitution infraction on the defense. 12th play to knock it off the field in time. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. So it is a good play. And ULM, their first points here in 2020 on the touchdown catch of six yards by Malik Jackson from that young man. Colby Suits making his first career start for ULM. And, and they're right in this game, Ross Tucker. Absolutely they are. Heck of a drive by Suits to move the ball down the field for ULM. Eating the holder, Hughes, he is true. 14-7. Jackson and company celebrating on the sideline for the Warhawks of ULM. It started with a stop on fourth down. 
The freshman Tyrell Robinson could not get free. Jabari Johnson, number two on defense, number two on offense. Jackson caps it off, 14-7. A little more than two minutes remaining here in the first half. And for Army, the first points they've allowed in 12 drives this season. Colby Suits, start of the game, came out, came back in, leads ULM to their first scoring drive of the season on a six-yard pitch and catch to Malik Jackson. Sparks sends her deep. Tyrell Robinson took one back in Army's last scrimmage. Won't take this one back in the Warhawks. You can see it up here and hear it up here. They have turned it up a couple of notches here, Ross. And we go back to the touchdown I mentioned from Suits to Jackson. Take us through it, Ross. Watch both number twos, Jackson and Malcolm Morrison, as these two guys are just going to clear out. You'll see Morrison, the defensive back for Army, he gets his eyes in the backfield right there. Oh, he's, it's over. Once he saw those two guys break in front of him, he vacated his zone. It was over. Really nice design to have the two outside receivers clear out so Jackson could run the corner out there and Morrison's eyes were not disciplined enough. So Army with the football. Just across their 20-yard line. Anderson to the air. Fastball, and that one was way too fast for Brandon Walters. Had a terrific week last week blocking for Army. Coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report, Brent Stover, Houston Up, Randy Cross, and Kevin Carter. We'll get you caught up on all the latest scores and news in college football. It's all coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. Six games last Saturday, Ross, 19 this Saturday. Army needs to be careful here. They do. Two minutes left. They have two timeouts. This is not their strength. You don't want to turn the football over here or have an interception. You also don't want to give them on ULM quickly. Right. Their mojo is sky high right now, and Anderson punished down to the turf just over the 25-yard line, taken down from behind there. Good physical play by Kevin Pointer. You mentioned his name twice earlier in the game. Defensive coordinator Scott Stoker said, I told him he's playing his first college game. You better keep your pads down or they're going to run you to the mess hall. Third and six here. Anderson takes a shot. Ball floated out there. And incomplete. Anderson back out of your picture is down on the field just across the 15-yard line. He took a wicked shot pressured by Travion Webster. Christian Anderson. A heavy, heavy hit delivered by Webster. I told you, Ben, this yep. is not what Army does well. No, it's not their strong suit. Obvious passing downs out of the shotgun. Travian Webster came on a blitz, and he hit Anderson right in the ribs. They practice it, just not nearly as much mm -hmm. as all of the run game stuff. Here's a look, Ross. You'll see Webster. He's the top of your screen. He comes in unblocked. Ooh. Boom. Right there. That right arm is an area that did not look good coming down. Kudos to Webster, by the way, for a good legal tackle there. He'll get his head out of it. Yep. Hits him a little bit, but not with the crown of the helmet. Mm -hmm. Anderson is on his knees as far as he's gotten. He was really rocked on that hit by Webster. Jabari Laws, who saw a lot of playing time last year with Anderson, still not ready to come back. Jamel Jones right now listed as their backup. A fourth down and six. As they'll tend to Anderson. There's Jamel Jones, number seven there. Saw him late in the game last week. The more immediate thing right now is that Louisiana yes. Monroe has a, a chance to get more points on the board. They've got three timeouts. Yep. It's a minute and a half. I thought maybe they would use a timeout after second down. When Army ran the football, they elected to keep it. That's the first three and out all year yes. for Army. And now ULM should get the ball in pretty good field position with all three timeouts. And Colby suits their quarterback throwing the ball well right now. Zach Harding, first punt 
of the season. They came in 142 minutes and change since they last punted. Here's Carter, he's a speedster, running out of room though. And he'll be tackled, gang tackled around the 23, so a minute 16. All three timeouts after a 54-yard punt, Ross. We don't talk about it often enough, mm -hmm. but special teams is a huge. huge factor. Huge. That was awesome by Army right there. I, I mean, just an absolutely terrific punt, and then excellent coverage all across the board. I really thought ULM was going to get excellent field position. Instead, they're backed up. Yep. Colby suits. He's worn the suit well so far, seven for eight. I was going to say 108. That. I was going to say that stat, I was going to say that stat line that stat line suits him pretty well. It does suit him we're, pretty well. We're both trying to get that suits <laughs> put in. Here we go all kidding aside. Key point in this half. And to the outside not much there. For Chandler Whitfield one of their wide receivers second down coming up clock moving three timeouts for ULM. Kind of in that no man's land right now where nobody wants to use the timeout because ULM doesn't want to use a timeout in case Army then would get the yeah. ball back. But they're taking way too much time here. They are. I mean, even if you're not going to use the timeout, you don't want to take up this much time because you're not that worried about Army scoring on the other. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, that's bad again for the second straight week. Issues at the end of this. Louisiana first Monroe half. takes its first time out of the half. It'll be a 30 second timeout. So 43 seconds remaining here. Two timeouts for Matt Viator and just bad clock management there. I'm okay with them not calling the timeout right away, but, but then you got to call a play. Right, I mean, you got to get to be up on the ball and you got to go, and you, you sure as heck don't let 20 seconds go and then call a timeout. Right. So, watch the end of this play. Yep. That's the first down play. Minute 10 on the game clock. Mm -hmm. About 25 seconds, isn't it? Yeah, I mean 27 seconds. Yep, 27 to be exact. That they yes. just wasted. You know, I think it should be noted that last week when Middle Tennessee had their clock management debacle, it was their first game of the season. Right. This is ULM's yes. first game of the season. Matt Viator, fifth season as their head coach. He's got two TOs left, 43 seconds to go. Here we go on second down. From the gun, some pressure coming late. Radigan got in there and allowed his teammates to drop Colby Suits. Eric Smith in there. Bonsu in there trying to rip the ball out. Timeout taken. Army takes its second timeout of the half. It'll be a 30 second timeout. One left for them, two for ULM with 37 seconds to play in the half. These Army blitzes have been awesome. Watch Radigan again. 47 hesitation, delayed blitz. West goes inside. Radigan's free. ULM not doing a good job with their blitz pickup at all. And if you're suits, you got to throw that ball. Yeah. I mean, you either throw it away or you throw it to somebody. But now you take a huge loss, and the clock would have kept running if Army didn't call timeout there. Yep. Pretty poor last couple plays here by ULM. And so now everything's totally flipped. Right. My guess is ULM will do something very conservative here, Ben, mm -hmm. to try to keep the clock moving and force Army to use their last timeout and then punt it away, try to punt it away to Army with less than 30 seconds left on the clock. Army with two sacks in the game. We're being told Christian Anderson has been taken back to the locker room or was taken back to the locker room. Third and 14 here. Josh Johnson to the left of Colby Suits from the shotgun. Suits, and he had a man there, just under through the pass there, looking for Jonathan Hodo. I don't think Hodo would have gotten the first down anyway. No. And now they don't even run any clock, and they save Army a timeout. So now Army gets the ball. It was only four seconds they ran off the clock, mm -hmm. and they didn't force Army to use their last timeout. Man, that's that's three plays in a row, Ben, yep. that are objectively really poor. The first one, not calling timeout and taking too much time. Yes. The second one, Suits not getting rid of the ball. And the third one there, not forcing Army to use their last timeout. Let's see if Army comes after it again. Yes, that's the key thing. Fourth punt of the day for Jared Porter, averaging 32-7. Just needs to get rid of this thing. 
and get it downfield as far as he can. Good effort out of him there. And it'll go out of bounds on ULM's side of the field, just shy of their 48 with 27 seconds to play in the half. Army's got one timeout remaining, a 28-yard punt. So Jamel Jones will come into the game. Christian Anderson was hit on a heavy shot delivered by Travion Webster on Army's last possession. You see the particulars on Jones here. What do they do here, Ross? They just they try to get something here. They just run it out. Well, we're about to see how much they trust Jamel Jones because uh -huh. they're only 17 yards away field from goal. their field goal target line, which is around the 30. Munkin said 30 yep. yard line, 47 yard field goal. So only 17 yards away. For Landon Salyers. And there go the whistles. Flag on the play. Now they're 22 yards away. Right. Before the snap, false start. Number 76 of the offense. It's a five yard penalty. First down. Uh, Please just set the game clock to 27 seconds. 0 2 7. Thank you. Peyton Reeder, the guilty one there, and you said 22 yards away now. I think we got what, what's the right guard, Peyton Reeder, here. You'll just see him move out of his set. Yeah, that was yep. pretty obvious. Mason Hussman even pointed at him. Second Army penalty of the day for 10 yards. They looked like, though, Ben, they were trusting Jones to make a throw and try to get in field goal range. He did. Here he is out of the shotgun. Murphy was the motion man. Pressure coming. Jones forced out, flings it way under, throws the target, but somehow Alston got back. Did he make Jamel that Jones catch? Isaiah Alston looked like it was two, three yards short, Ross. Are you kidding me? Wow. Now, first down. So the clock stops on the first down till Army gets up on the ball. And play halted. Timeout was taken by ULM there. They've got one left. I think ULM called timeout because yes. they want the replay official to take a look at it. I'm with you, and our replay official is Mark McEnany for the second straight week. Louisiana Monroe takes its second timeout of the half. So 16 a 30 second seconds timeout. left here in the half. Here's a look back at the catch. They said was a catch by Alston. Are you kidding Going me? Going on the field is a completed catch for a first down. That play is under further review. That's a catch. He got that left hand under it. Credit Viator, by the way, for calling timeout so that they do take a look at it. Watch the left hand. Hard to tell from that angle yeah. because we're behind Alston and his body. But the first angle we saw, it looked like he got his left hand under it. And if you notice, the ULM guys are not saying it's incomplete, really. Ollie right there, 15. Yep. Now, he did point a little bit. Yeah, he pointed at the ground. This is the best look. Watch the left hand. Man, that is amazing. I can't see it touching the ground. I don't I either. Think he got it. I, I'm with you. I agree with you. He is a like Tyrell Robinson, a big time prospect, special kind of player. It might have touched the ground, Ben, but I don't see indisputable visual evidence to overturn it and say it definitely touched the ground and he didn't possess the football. You know, the replay official today, Mark McEnany, as I mentioned, part of the tweak to this process this year in college football was if you can't make a decision with two within two minutes the call stands on the field. It was a tweak this year call on the field was a catch and a first down at the ULM 23 was the call on the field. Army's got a timeout remaining 16 seconds to go as we take another peek here. We're going to get the word here soon from Mike Roach. After further review, after further review, the ruling on the field stands. It'll be a completed catch for a first down. Because the replay process was initiated at the same time as the timeout, Louisiana Monroe will not be charged their timeout. They have two timeouts remaining. All right, so Mike Roach cleaning things up there for us. They got two left, 16 seconds. They go in the end zone a couple of times to Alston. He is 6'4", 
Right, well, they're already in field goal range. You have the one timeout. You really don't want to use that timeout unless there's a play in the middle of the field. Army needs to be up on the football, though, here, because the clock will start running as soon as it's set for play, as soon as he winds it, because it was a first down. Correct. There it is. Clock moving, Jones pressured, knocked down. They go to the end zone, and you got seven seconds remaining now. Man, I really don't like Army waiting four seconds to snap the ball there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it might have cost you a chance at another play. Right. Pressure up the middle. There is again. no foul for grounding on the play as there was a receiver in the area. So that's a mental error there in my mind, Ben, because you knew that it was a first down and that the clock would start on the set for play. I don't know why he went through a four second cadence. Now they got to be really quick because you don't want to take the chance of not getting a field goal attempt here. Seven seconds left on the clock. Army's got a timeout. And well, now they don't. They took their last timeout with seven seconds Army remaining. Army takes its final timeout of the half. And I'll tell you what I think this is, Ben. This is Jeff Munkin telling his guys, hey, there's only seven seconds. We go to the end zone or nowhere. You can't scramble around. It's a young quarterback in Jamel Jones. He wants to make sure he knows you got to throw the ball into the end zone to somebody or into the back of the end zone, throw it away so that we make sure we get a field goal attempt here. That's what he's telling him right now. I'm telling you. Right. Out of timeouts is Army. And actually, they're not even going to they're not even going to give him that opportunity. Salyers is coming out. Yep. Yep. And he he knocked through a 44 yard field goal last week. DeCorey and Patterson of Middle Tennessee ran into him. It kept the drive alive. But he, that thing was good from 55. I wonder if Anderson was in if they would have given him that opportunity. But with an it, inexperienced yeah. guy like Jones, the only way they'd really feel bad is if they didn't get this field goal attempt. So a 40 yard attempt for Salyers. His career long 42 against Liberty, the only field goal he's made in his career. And ULM took a timeout. Before the snap, Louisiana Monroe takes its second time out of the half. Well, and that got blocked. Yep. So I don't know if Viator is regretting that right now. You can even hear the electronic whistle sound different, Ben. Very different. It, it is a different sound. You know, they don't want to have real whistles because of COVID and the pandemic. They don't want the officials to be having all kinds of spittle and saliva 300 times a game. So instead they have these electronic whistles and they sound different for sure. And I wonder if the guys just aren't used to them at times. Yeah. There's a look at it right there. In his left hand. Yep, left hand. Spittle? I don't know that I've ever heard that word. Spittle. You know what? In the in the CBS seminar. Steve Shaw, the officiating coordinator, uh -huh. used the word spittle. I, I don't know that I've ever <laughs> used that word either. So here's Salyers trying to make it a 10 point lead. Good snap, good hold. Landon Salyers, that baby is good and through. And Army's up by 10. So Munkin's guys get points here to increase it to that 10 point lead with just two seconds remaining in the half. I feel like I always need to wait till the cannons <laughs> pulsing through my brain there, but that's a big kick by Sawyers. I mean, it looked like ULM had a chance to have momentum at the end of the half, but their mismanagement of the clock is what enabled yep. Army to have the opportunity to throw the ball from Jones to Alston. The tremendous catch by the freshman Alston gets three points and a two-score lead for Army. That's that's brutal yeah. for ULM that they allowed Army to get a two score lead at the end of the half like that. Beautiful West Point Saturday here. Cora Cadets approximately 4,300 here. Onto their squad. 17 and 2 here. It's the 2017 season. ULM, their opener here in 2020. One of 12 teams like Army trying with the hopes of playing all 12 games. 
And if you think about it, Ben, the third down for ULM, if they had done something to get the clock moving, right, and forced Army to use their last timeout, Army doesn't get a chance to get that field goal off right there, potentially. Mm -hmm. Isaiah Phillips. hands on the ball. Jeff Monk had talked about how dangerous their return men are. The speed they've got back there. Salyers, yep, he's going to squib it down there. And a good kick by Landon Salyers, keeping that out of the hands of Phillips. There are two seconds remaining in the half. And they'll have it from the 25-yard line. Really two options here for ULM. You can take a knee and take it in the locker room. Or you have, look, Jeff Monk is not happy that no time went off the clock. He did not want them to be able to get a snap at the end of the half here. So they can either take a knee or there are some end of game, end of half plays that they have where they could throw it deep. But it, when you see the halfback way deep like this, right, all the way at the back, that means they're taking a knee. Yep. He is the safety valve. Mm -hmm. So they're taking a knee and he's there just in case. Herm Edwards is out there for the <laughs> right. miracle of the Meadowlands. Yep, that's right. There's the knee from Suits, and Army will get the football to begin the third quarter. Entertaining, interesting. First half of play here from Mikey Stadium. Army on top, 17-7 over the Warhawks of ULM out of Monroe, Louisiana. It's end of the first half, you're watching college football right here on CBS Sports Network, presented proudly today by the Home Depot. Take a look at the first half stats brought to us by your exchange. Rush yards, huge edge for Army, as is the case most weeks, Ross. What else grabs your eyes? That's the big one, of course. Time of possession, a lot more even than it normally is between these two teams. Credit ULM for withstanding the charge of the first quarter by Army. And Army gets a field goal in the final minute of the half as we welcome you upstairs to our broadcast position. Ross Tucker, Ben Holden, great to have you with us. Biggest takeaway or two from half number one in your eyes? Well, two things. Number one, how incredible it was that Army was able to get that field goal at the end. That's huge difference between being up one score and two scores and just the rushing attack. For Army, especially in the first quarter and a half, will be interesting to see whether or not they can get back to that here. All right, let's take a look at some key moving pictures, and it features that ground game of Army Ross. And early on, it was Christian Anderson on that quarterback counter for a touchdown. Beautiful play call by Brent Davis. Then the freshman, Tyrell Robinson. He's got another gear going down the sideline. Santa McCoy, the second and third effort to get that second touchdown for the Black Knights. And they were in business up 14 nothing. But if you think about it, ULM did a nice job after that. You, know, you get back to 14-7. They stopped Army on a couple different series. This is a gigantic series right here. Daniel Sparks has it teed up. A.J. Howard, number five, and Tyrell Robinson, 21, the return men. And a fair catch called for by Tyrell Robinson. To begin the third quarter, down to Tina Serracio. Tina. Well, going into the locker room, Jeff Munkin said that Christian Anderson will be just fine. And he was warming up and taking a few snaps, has his helmet on. So we will see Anderson likely here the second half. Munkin was upset with the way that Army gave up big plays in the second quarter and was unable to uh, convert that fourth down. It was a broken play. They didn't execute it right, Ross. Matt Viator, he called the wrong formation, and that is why time kept running at the end of the half. And then they finally called timeout at 43 seconds. Otherwise, the plan is to also get uh, Hunt in another series because they just have and had practice. That's the quarterback switch story. All right, great stuff, Tina. Thank you. And we're underway here in the third quarter. Yeah. Webster delivering the shot there to Sandin McCoy. Found the end zone in the first half, did McCoy. Webster had that huge hit in the first half on Anderson that knocked him out of the game until now, of course, being back in. Webster's not messing around. Watch him scrape over the top here to make the tackle. He sees the block down. He's scraping outside. McCoy bounces. That's a Form tackle or Debbie Webster. Wow. 
I would not like to collide with that young man. He's had three or four big time hits in this game already. Second and seven now for Army. Murphy the motion man. And on the ground, they pitched it out near side. Webster on that again as that was Tyrell Robinson who covered up third down coming up third and long for Army and they had something there. This is the third time in a row. You'll see here comes Robinson left side of your screen. The pitch by Anderson was just a little bit in front of him. That's three in a row Ben where Anderson and Robinson are not quite in sync with the pitch relationship and the timing. So third down and eight now. Anderson cuts back inside. Good job getting in there. Making the tackle down low by Sweeney. Elo Sweeney and Army slowed up in their tracks. What a three and out there Big by time. UL. I mean, yep. the second down dropped pitch really helped. But this is just quarterback zone to the side and a nice job right there by Sweeney to slow him down. Because Sweeney was really responsible for the pitch guy and he faked like he was going to the pitch guy and still was able to get a piece of Anderson to slow him down. So Harding on to punt for the second time today. 54 on his first effort. Puts the right foot into it. And the fair catch made at the 35 yard line by Perry Carter Jr. And that's where ULM will have their first possession after a 38 yard punt here in the third quarter. Colby suits in that first half. He started the game. Ross came out for a series. Hunt came in and then suits came back in. Let him down the field. He did. The touchdown drive was especially good. He had the deep post there. They weren't even able to score on that drive to Bloomfield. Then it was Peterson. The all conference tight end finally able to get in the end zone there for the touchdown to Malik Jackson. Eight for 10, 109 yeah. yards and a touchdown. He's Filling in for a guy that had started 34 straight games in Caleb Evans. Yep. Caleb Evans was a good one. Three year starter near side, and Carter went up, could not hang on to it. Good coverage there from the secondary, and Julian McDuffie was on the coverage for Army. Nice job by McDuffie. You know, he's another guy out there playing because Javari Bordeaux is injured, and McDuffie in man to man coverage able to break on that football and not let ULM even get a modest game. Josh Peterson, the motion man. They look his way, then come back swinging up. Josh Johnson eluded one tackle, couldn't get away from the other two. And he has dropped good work in there. Nolan Cockrell in there again. Man, has he had a great start. To 2020, a loss of three. Starting to get a man crush on Cockrell. Watch him right <laughs> here. Watch him the whole play, okay? He's going to rush, and then this is called a retrace. He rushes. Uh oh, something's fishy. I got to retrace. Try to get on this play. Chase him down. Man, that's a 285 pound nose tackle right there. That He's a stud. He, he is. really is. I he mean, is. we're a game and a half in. I can already tell you, he's a dude. Bobina Bonsu said earlier this season he's strong, he's just a dog, and Suits gets away, fires a dart in there, and it's caught, and it is close, but it's going to be about a yard shy of the first down. It'll bring up fourth down. They pick up 12 there. Does Viator dare go for it here? I think you got to go. I mean, did you come here to keep it close, or no. did you come here to try to win? Came here to win. Hodo with the catch. And then I think you got to go. I yep. mean, it's fourth and... I'd say three quarters of a yard. You got a really good running back. Yep. I think you got to go. You may not get it back in this quarter. It's possible. I've seen it. So have you. They go for it. 16 for 28 a season ago where the Warhawks bad snapper was unintentional. And there's a flag down. So hold the phone here for a minute. We'll check the penalty flag. They're lucky they threw the penalty flag. They really they, are. That, that, that play was dead to rights. Jim Eckel, the umpire, brought everybody in. Here's the word from Roach, Mike Roach. Snap infraction, offense number 51. It's a five-yard penalty, fourth down. Zach Bro, the center. It didn't look right from the start, Ross. Yo, you see that? Yep. That they stemmed the nose tackle. You see that late movement from Nolan Cockrell, the nose tackle. He went from head up 
to in the gap. And his movement like that caused Bro to have that early snap, the snap infraction there. Again, Nate Woody, the D coordinator for Army, with just a little wrinkle to have that little pre-snap movement that got to Bro. Fifth punt of the day for Jared Porter. 31.2 per Army coming again. They have brought pressure on every punt except one. And it's down by Travion Webster at the 36-yard line. And we'll head to break. Army with the football leading by 10 after a 25-yard punt here at Mikey Stadium. Being a part of the Army-Navy game is just an experience that can match the Super Bowl. Um, you know, people playing football, you dream of playing in games like these. Growing up, I didn't understand the importance of this rivalry until I actually played in it. And uh, just seeing millions of fans watching, I think that's amazing. That's amazing. Artis Hobbs, the senior out of Georgia, his thoughts on that Army-Navy game and just 91 days to go in the countdown to America's game. It's the Army-Navy game presented by USAA on CBS Sports. Hobbs, part of that backfield now, four years. He and Kel Walker have made some huge plays. Of course, Kel graduated now. Here's Anderson. Army three and out of the last series, and they are all over Christian Anderson. Austin Holly right in his jersey to make the stop there. Gain of a yard. Travion Webster oh. is a bad, bad man. He's he's balling. I mean, watch number 10 right here. Watch the collision with Sandon McCoy. We've seen Sandon McCoy annihilate guys. Yes. Watch Travion Webster, number 10. Watch this. Boom! Oh, wow. Unloads, uncorks his hips. I mean, that is as violent of a collision as you'll see in the sport of football. A fullback and a linebacker taking five-yard runnies at each other. 27 tackles a season to go in 11 games played. Six, his best game of the season last year against South Alabama. There's Webster again right on Q Ross Tucker. He is playing some inspired football. It, it's like they just let him out of quarantine and he's <laughs> unleashed. I mean, I, I, I might just watch Webster every play. Watch him run out here and make this play. Watch this. That's big time. I mean, he is flying. That's on Tyrell Robinson, their fastest guy on offense. I mean, Travion Webster is introducing himself to America today. Army three of seven on third down. They need eight here. Anderson, nowhere to go. It's Holly, Holly and Webster just getting after it here. They've clearly made some adjustments here, Ross Tucker. I mentioned earlier Holly, okay. that the free safety is usually unblocked when you run a 4-2-5. Brent Davis told us it's hard to get to the free safety. Watch Hawley. As soon as he sees the down block, he attacks it. He sees that Robinson. He's right there. Nowhere else to go for Anderson. That's an easy tackle for Hawley. ULM comes out of the second half ready to go on defense. Scott Stoker, their defensive coordinator. I love when you asked him, he said, when did you find out you were playing Army when you got the job? And college fake by Army, and here they go into the open field. A fake, and they're still with it. Down to the 20-yard line, and they pull that out of the special teams bucket. Outstanding play call. Wilson Cato, the junior linebacker, with the fake, and they execute it to perfection. Are you kidding me? Watch Cato right here. He'll get the direct snap and then hit it right there. It gets a terrific down block by the wing right there. The ball goes right to Cato. He's got two lead blockers. Huge hole. And Cato even breaks a tackle and gets some extra yards. You want to talk about a gutsy play call by Jeff Munkin? It's fourth and ten. Not fourth and five. Fourth and ten. Army better hurry up here and get the snap off. Down to five on the play clock. On that fake punt, a gain of 47 yards. Jacoby Buchanan, Buchanan with, with the, the carry. In the Today's Red, red zone. zone being brought to you by Verizon. That's what Army That's has done today. Virginia Perfect so far. And there's Travion Webster. I still can't get over the fake punt. I mean, Ben, they were pretty deep in their own territory. Uh -huh. It's fourth and 10. You're up by 10. They could have given ULM a great opportunity to make this a one-score game. Anderson gets off to Buchanan. Webster, another tackle, but 
it is no easy task to get Buchanan to the ground. You're not knocking him backwards. No. I mean, we've seen Webster no. light up a bunch of guys in this game. You're not knocking him. I mean, six foot, 260. Yep. Ben, how tall are you? Bare, with my hair spiked up, six foot. How much do you weigh? 195. Do you think you could put on 65 pounds? No. That's what Buchanan is. <laughs> six foot, 260. It hurt my golf game. It's like a, a rolling ball of butcher knives. That's why they call him the wrecking ball. First and goal, Army. That play blown up. Great work by the Warhawk front there. Deontay Roberts to stop the sophomore out of Arkansas. Pointer in there as well. Second and goal for Army now. Ball at the six yard line. Pointer's got some quickness. He does. Watch him come right off the down block there at McCleary. Really good quickness. Man. And that's one where if that's who they're optioning, that Anderson needs to pull the ball and take it. Kind of weird to me that again, no Santa McCoy down here near the goal line. Yeah. Unbalanced line to the right. Usually where they go, Ben. Anderson to fake to Bernard. And Anderson to the end zone. Christian Anderson, his second touchdown of the day. The fake punt sets it all up. A six-yard run for Christian Anderson. And Army on top, 23-7, as they spend the cannon money. And once again, they had that unbalanced line to the right. We saw that a lot last week. So you get the good blocks by McCleary. A lead block there by Artis Hobbs. That's right. Getting Anderson into the end zone. O'Connor will snap it. Jose to hold. Salyers right down. Thayer Boulevard, I suppose, here on post. And Anderson leads him in again. Took a heavy shot in the first half. Comes back. Gets his second touchdown of the day. This one from six yards. And Army on top, 24-7. A little more than six to play here in the third quarter. Army a touchdown run of six yards from Christian Anderson to make it 24-7. And here's today's serve pro first responder, Ross Tucker. It was the fake punt to Wilson Cato. What a gutsy call by Jeff Munkin. No guts, no glory, perfect execution. Special teams can and often are a major factor, especially early in the season. And Army uses that to get a three-score lead. Christian Anderson, there's Cato. Some more time in the linebacker rotation this season is Wilson Cato. Anderson, 21 for 95 on the ground, a pair of touchdowns. Eight play drive, 65 yards, took 441. 47-yard fake punt you just mentioned, partner. The turning point of that drive as Salyers has it ready to go from the 35-yard line. And remember, ULM was stoning Army on that drive. They were. I mean, they were. Well, they go three and out the first one. The second one, then, yeah, they There's going to be another three and it out. It was. It was looking that the way. Big punt. Yep. Toe meets leather from Salyers. And it's bobbled by Isaiah Phillips. Still gathers it, brings it out. Phillips to about the 17-yard line. That's where ULM will go to work here on offense, looking to get something going. It's got to be a bad feeling, huh? You yeah. turn your back to 11 guys that are coming down to try <laughs> to light you up. All shot out of a cannon. Pun intended here. <laughs> <laughs> New quarterback again. Hunt is back Hunt in the back game. Back in, yep. Jeremy Hunt, junior out of Oak Park, Illinois. Trinity Valley Community College last year. Prior to that, 2018 was in the D2 ranks at Central Missouri. Threw for over 2,200, almost 2,300 yards that year. Right to the air this time, and is caught by the young man that's got their touchdown, Malik Jackson. Forced out of bounds. And spot him out around the 25-yard line. Right there, Ross, is something I think if ULM goes to the air, they've got a better shot. Nate Woody behind the sign there and the mask. I would just do what they just did right there right. often. Yeah. Often. Yeah. Try to get now. Look, they still have Josh Peterson, Josh Johnson, but right. get the ball out in space. Army's playing off. I mean, they're playing way off some of these receivers. Look at the top of the screen. 
Hunt puts it into the bread basket of Josh Johnson. Army, great pursuit left side of the line. No gain. It's going to bring up a third down and three. Malcolm Morrison leading the charge. Bonsu there in there as well. No gain on the play. They're just not getting a lot of guys blocked. Man. Yeah, I mean, if we're taking the 30,000 foot approach to this thing, the O line for ULM is just not getting a lot of guys blocked in the run game. There's a lot of black jerseys there wherever Johnson tries to go. I mean, he averaged almost six and a half yards a carry last year, was 13th in all of FBS with 108 yards a game. Third and three, five to go in the quarter. ULM. Two of eight on third down. Hunt on the run. He's going to be short of the first down. Nathaniel Smith, the sophomore out of Fort Washington, Maryland, got him and forced him out of bounds. That is a really nice job by Smith. Backup linebacker getting some playing time. Able to stop him short of the line to go. And now they're going to punt, and the players are frustrated. Yeah. I don't blame them because less than five minutes left in the third quarter going against this Army offense. I don't want to say you're conceding. I don't want to say you're waving the white flag, but it, it makes it hard to have your guys believe you're trying to win in this situation. But I understand Viator saying, hey, it's fourth and two at our own 26 yard line. Yeah. Jared Porter, half dozen punts. Flag down, Army got in there, blocked it, picked up though by Pointer. And Pointer into the open field. We got to check the flag though, as he takes it across the midfield line. <laughs> Are you kidding me? The special teams plays here in this corner have been plays you hardly ever see. Did you see how well he, he can, can move? Run? Yeah. I mean, he's six one two ninety. He looked like he was two ten. Legal formation, kicking team. Too many men in the backfield. It's a five yard penalty. Replay fourth down. Oh. oh, man. And now he's got to go back out there. Yep. Let's look back at the whole sequence here, Ross. I had said that Army was going to block one of these. Yep, they got you did. They blocked that so easily, but it went right to Pointer. And Pointer, I mean, he was moving. I don't know about the ball security there. <laughs> Lowers the shoulder. Imagine trying to tackle. He must have been a running back at some point. I mean, he can run. Usually when a big guy gets the ball, it feels like they're slow. Pointer can roll. That was a 40-yard jaunt all for not. Fourth penalty on the Warhawks of ULM for 30 yards in the game. So now. Jared Porter standing in his own five. We'll try this again. Two back off. They were showing nine coming. They get in there again and nearly got that one. And a fair catch made at the Army 46 yard line by Tyro Robinson. 4 0 3 to go in the third. Army on top 24 7. They've got him. We come back. I've been. Good to have you back. Let's now take a look at today's QB comparison brought to you by Sonic Colby Suits. His first start for ULM on the left, Christian Anderson on the right, Ross. Pretty big difference there. <laughs> Anderson running, Suits throwing, kind of what you'd expect from Army against ULM. Yep, and let's go back to that punt. After Pointer ran for 40, they did it over. Watch the clock on the left side. Porter boots it away. Clock, clock never moved. Game clock never moved. And no indication, we're told, that it's staying at 4.03. And the 46 Army goes to work. Christian Anderson running their machine. Sandon McCoy to the 48 of ULM. Unbelievable push up front there. It's almost quarterback sneak block and watch the interior trio. Look at the white jerseys getting knocked back. Just knocked back. That's a beautiful thing. That's why you lift all those weights to try to knock and push the opposition backwards. Like a road grader. Boy, good job up front. Sean Johnson and company lead the charge. Down the Hudson to Brent Stover for an update in the studio. Brent. 
Guys, big day for the Sun Belt. Louisiana wins at Iowa State and Arkansas State with his game-winning touchdown from Jonathan Adams goes into Manhattan, beats K-State 35-31. Thank you, Brent. I know that's painful for Brent. He's a K-State guy. The Sun Belt flexing their muscle today, Ross. Wow. ULM's conference is yeah. having a day. Yep. You can, and that's what he does. He just falls forward, gets you two yards, <laughs> gets him a first down in this particular carry. This is when Army really starts to wear on you, right? Yep. The ULM coaches told us they were a little bit worried about the conditioning of their guys. They really didn't put pads on since August 20th until last Wednesday, and they're not very deep at defensive end. Army just going to try to pound them for the rest of this game. Yep, two and a half and counting here in the quarter. 16 first downs for Army. Unbalanced line to the right, usually where they end up going. Yep. Left side of the field, Buchanan. Stead the 32 belly option up the middle there to the 35. It'll be second and a yard coming up. Of course, football today proudly sponsored by USAA. Cannon out McCoy in. This could be a tricky down to go for the jugular here if you're Army and try to throw it deep. They do have Isaiah Alston in at the top of your screen. He made a ridiculous catch in the first half. Did not look there was any chance that he was going to get that ball, and he got it. First down carry there. On a sand and McCoy stopped by Keyshawn Johnson, but they moved the chains. I almost feel like Jeff Munkin would rather just slowly bleed the clock and get first downs like that then even try to take a shot and get another touchdown. Tyrell Robinson checked out of the game. One of the slot backs there is Jeff Munkin Cade Bernard in it. The B back spot as they call it here on post at West Point fullback spot. And Bernard was Austin Holly, but he dragged him for about three yards. Trying to stop Army's run game and the option, it's so physically and mentally draining. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes the defenses, they look at the clock, you see the total yards at the bottom, but they look at the clock, they see it's 24 7. Late in the third quarter, they know what's coming, and mm -hmm. mentally they want to try to stop the run, but it's just difficult. Unbalanced line to the right, one more time. And Buchanan, the misdirection, Hill trotted for the touchdown. Not his forte, but he got into space, and he was all alone. A 25-yard jaunt to the end zone for Jacoby Buchanan. Dare I say, Jacoby <laughs> fire the Buchanan just runs it right off the backside block. On the backside, Keyshawn Johnson wasn't tight enough. All of the action was going to the right. He took it all the way back behind the left guard. Really the backside B gap between the guard and the tackle. And ULM, I think, was just worn out. Yep, looked that way. Salyers off the upright. He had one last week that went off the upright and through, but not this time. So Jacoby Buchanan Ross makes it 30 to 7 here, late stages of the third. Look at the big man. They always keep it entertaining to the core here at West Point. 24 seconds remaining. Here in the third quarter, Army on top by 23. And you look at the scoring summary on that last possession, seven plays, 54 yards, a little over three and a half minutes. And Jacoby Buchanan, fair to say the longest run he's had in his career at Army. That is not his forte. But, man, he looked good out there in space, Ross. Not very many times in a quarter you have that many men over 240 pounds carry a football. I mean, <laughs> Wilson Cato, the linebacker, then you had the D tackle Kevin Pointer for ULM Buchanan at 260 mm -hmm. showing some pretty good feet to be able to make that cut to the backside and proving he can do more than just 
bang into a defender and fall forward for a couple yards. How about the, mouth, the mouthpiece there of Isaiah Phillips? I don't know that I've seen that before. He bobbled another one. Phillips trying to get the edge. Phillips, good return, forced out of bounds. Good work there on the kick coverage group. And ULM will go to work from there with 16 ticks remaining in the quarter. Next Saturday, it all gets underway at 1.30. Our first doubleheader of the season on CBS Sports Network. It'll be Appalachian State taking on Marshall, followed by SMU and North Texas. Make sure you catch it all right here on CBS Sports Network. And App State, Zach Thomas, he is a good one, a special one, Ross. He And he has been for a long time. I remember when they almost beat Penn State up in Happy Valley. He was awesome. That might have been his first start a few years ago. So here goes Colby Suits back in the game. They gave Hunt a drive earlier, and there is a penalty flag. I was waiting. I felt that one was going to be flagged, and it was with 10 ticks remaining here as they look for Chandler Whitfield that time. Pass interference. Defense number 22. Ball be placed in the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Cedric Cunningham, the guilty one there. Look at the right side of your screen. You'll see him come across. Cunningham kind of cuts him off trying to make a play on the football. I think that's the right call there. You know, when you've got Whitfield running a crossing route like that, you can't cut him off and make contact like he did. The 14 7 game in the first half. Good looking ball. Downfield nearly picked. Diving to the turf there was Markel Broughton. And he had the receiver down that seam but could not find him. Broughton is one heck of a middle of the field safety. Watch him come over from the left side of your screen. Ooh. Covers a lot of ground. Mm -hmm. They've got a really nice underclassman pair of safeties there. Almost able to get it. Yep. Was not a good throw by Suits. Hodo had his guy beat by a couple steps. Suits has a big arm. He's got to put that in front of him. Instead, it was thrown a little bit behind him, underthrown. Suits 10 out of 14 for 118 in the touchdown. Swings it out near side. And Army all over that. McDuffie in there. Radigan in there. And that's going to do it for the third quarter. That's the end of the third quarter. Mark well brought in there as well. That'll do it for the third. 30 to 7, Army on top of ULM. Great to have you with us today. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network, presented proudly by the Home Depot. Take a look at today's Bass Pro and Cabela's Where Are They Now? We take a look at former Army linebacker Kenneth Brinson. He's a two time academic All American, earned a degree in chemical engineering with a minor in pre med in 2018. Are you kidding me? Brinson is now pursuing an MD at the Stanford School of Medicine and a PhD in their engineering school. Interesting side note here, Ross. He was recruited and offered by 40 FBS schools. Stanford, one of them. Now he's there doing what he's doing. He he is an amazing young man. MD and PhD? That's right. So do you have to call him doctor twice? Doctor, Do doctor. Doctor, doctor. <laughs> Colby suits back in, zings one down the middle. That is caught. It is Josh Peterson to move the chains for the Warhawks. He catches everything. He does. They really need to throw him the ball more. Yeah. I mean, it almost doesn't matter how good the coverage is. Josh Peterson's gonna catch him. He's a former high school wide receiver yep. that just gotten bigger and bigger and now finds himself as an NFL prospect, and rightfully so, because that's what they're looking for. They're looking for guys with wide receiver like route running skills that are big enough to play tight end. Now he's an in line tight end at the top of the screen. Yeah, he's a good one. You can see it right away. His father was a quarterback at this school, then. Northeast Louisiana. His mom was an outstanding college athlete as well, and national championship for his dad, a quarterback in 1987. Tina's got more. Tina. Yes, and you mentioned Peterson's mom. Her name was Janine. She played basketball at Louisiana College. So just talking about dad and mom, the great athletes, I said, all right, Josh, who's the best <laughs> athlete? And he said, 
mom, me, then dad. And hopefully Coach Peterson's not listening and he's just preparing his Eagles for Washington right now. But the reason being, he says Josh, has, he still watches his mom put up shots in the driveway. And he said she's so fundamentally sound and technical. And that's why she's the, the best athlete of everybody. Well, of course, mom has to get the nod. That's great. It was fun talking with him the other day. Very colorful young man. A heck of a talent. Slides down to make the grab there. And they take it to the 40 yard line of Army after the catch. And there's proud father Doug, Super Bowl champion as a coach. Get a chance to work with Doug Peterson a lot during yeah. the Eagles preseason telecast. And he is number one, an awesome guy, and number two, an outstanding coach. They have to have the Philly special in the playbook, I would think, for his son at some point, right? Makes another catch down below us. It's his drive. He must know we're talking about it. Think about what his numbers are going to be by the end of this game. They might as well, you know, watching it now, it's like, why didn't they throw him the ball the whole game? That was, yeah, exactly. I mean, look at that coverage by Cunningham. I almost feel bad for him. There's not anything better you can do. It was a really good throw by Suits. Peterson always extends his arms catches with his hands and then brings it in. He's got those good hands from all the years of golf. Five catches, 56 yards for him so far. Tied for the national lead with nine touchdowns among tight ends last year. That one off the back of the lineman there. On the back of Tyler Johnson, number 50, who was at Tulane playing for Willie Fritz, and now he's a grad transfer at ULM. Trying to set up a screen, but I can assure you the screen was not for Tyler Johnson's back of his head. No. I don't see any eligible receiver. I mean, there's Peterson. Yeah. I don't know who he was trying to throw it to, but there wasn't anybody out there looking <laughs> like they wanted to catch it. Colby suits 14 out of 19 for 148 in the touchdown to Malik Jackson in the first half. Now he tucks it and runs. Took a shot there for McDuffie. And they're going to give him the 29-yard line. Ryan Duran also in on the tackle for Army as we come up on 12 to play in the fourth. Really like that play call there by ULM. Sometimes you want to draw, Ben, just to slow down the defensive linemen a little bit. You know, they're throwing almost every down. The D linemen are teeing off. You want to just try to slow them down a little bit with the draw. Let's see if Nate Woody, the Army DC, comes with the pressure. So Amadeo West there. Added to the lot watch list this week. What a story he is. Suits keeps it. Ball came out. Ball came out. Army's got it. Looked like it went right into the hands of Markel Broughton. And it did. And Army forces the turnover. They had four a week ago. And they're posing for pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was my man crush, Nolan Cockrell. Your man crush. <laughs> I think it was the nose tackle. Tell me this isn't 95 hustle right arm rip it out big man. It's time to eat. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Mercedes Benz. The best or nothing. By MCOR. Build power service protect. And by the exchange. Reeling them in, another turnover forced by Army. Markwell Broughton, the fumble recovery, the strip. By Nolan Cockrell, who's been outstanding, and yeah, they've been making a stand, all right. But eight tanks standing in front of these two teams they played so far. That is very impressive what they've done defensively with a new coordinator. Jones looked like he wanted to take a shot, instead has to tuck it and run. He's yanked down Kevin Pointer. He has been all over the joint today in a variety of ways. Makes a great stop there on Jamel Jones. Army looked to take a shot there. A little yeah. surprising trying to catch ULM off guard. Headsy decision by Jones to tuck it away, keep the clock moving, getting some positive yardage. But you're right about Pointer. <laughs> I mean, he is athletic. He's going to be a stud in the Sun Belt the next four years. Yep, redshirt freshman, 6'1", 287 out of Jonesboro, Arkansas. Red shirt a year ago. 
Great defensive tackle spot now, and he's going to get a face full of Jacoby Buchanan. Buchanan, as he does, falls forward for two or three yards to the 35-yard line. It brings up third down and three. These are the kind of situations Army lives for. Mm -hmm. Trying to grind clock now. You're up by 23 points. The clock is your friend. Keep it moving. Every first down is a couple more minutes off the clock. Army four of nine on third down. On balance line, you talk to to the left side this time. Buchanan able to take a couple of shots. Falls backwards and gets the first down. Austin Holly the tackle. Last week they had two 19 play drives. They had a 15 play drive earlier today. We talk a lot about how big he is and how he falls forward. I think we need to give him more credit for how good his feet are and how good his vision is because that's yet another run where he was able to use his feet to bounce it outside a little bit one hole wider and now they've got that unbalanced line to the right that's usually where they like to go then. Yep. Jamel Jones on the offense Jacoby Buchanan right side Christian Anderson was if you weren't with us took a big time shot from Travion Webster. Late in the first half, he did come out and start the third quarter. But you can be sure Brent Davis, Jeff Monk, and the offensive group, they're happy getting Jones in to get some reps here now. They did last week. They'll face BYU next week. Here at home, Buchanan 10 for 66 on the ground in the touchdown. He had 25 yards. That BYU game next Saturday on CBS yep. should be awesome. See BYU the other night against oh. Navy? Holy I cow. I did. Navy didn't. Well, they saw him. They were just running by him. They looked impressive. Buchanan again, and he's it's like a little shy, about a half yard shy of the first down. Inside of nine to play. Army in control right now by 23. There is a schedule. BYU. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson will call that one and their crew. Cincinnati the next week. That's going to be a tough one for Army as well. We'll see it for the CBS Sports Network games. Our group. And then Air Force on CBS as well. And Navy to cap things off in Philly as always. That's what I love. All those. The eye. All the CBS to the right. Yep. All eight home games. Most they've ever had here at Army are on our family of networks as ULM trying to strip that ball out of there. And Seth Mason, a freshman out of Allen, Texas. You, know, you look back at this game, Ross, and ULM came out. They looked outstanding the first two defensive times they were on the field. And then Army pulls the fake punt out, and that kind of, on the second one, kind of took the wind out of their sails after they went three and out to start the quarter did Army. It absolutely did and yet another opportunity here this week for Army to have their whole second string offensive line out there and right. get a lot of these guys some valuable reps. Jones. Drop there. Jones on the key. Time now to take a look at our Day in the life of a cadet brought to you by Verizon today. So you usually telestrate these what what grabs your eyes the most on all this on your there it is right there he's a Love freshman it. at West Point taking intro to war fighting that's right I would like to take that class <laughs> intro to war fighting <laughs> sounds better than math modeling to me yes component whatever that was last week that one I, when I started here in 2012 they wanted me to go to a class just to kind of understand what they do here at West Point it was one of the coolest things I've ever done and it was with Nate Combs, a former linebacker slash defensive end, as they pitch it to the outside, runs over defender and gets to the 40. So I go to class with Nate Combs, and it was basically how to execute an ambush. I was like, I don't want to leave. This is awesome. It was unreal, man. What an experience. I didn't know you knew who to do that. We're in the same hotel a lot. I got to be careful. <laughs> you, you know how to execute an ambush. <laughs> well, I don't really know. I just, you know, it was cool to watch him talk about it. The things they study in on the post here are remarkable. Men and women to go here. Third and one. The 40 of ULM. Buchanan look at him again. Jacoby Buchanan. Can he get into the end zone? Yes. Oh, Jacoby Buchanan. 
a 40 yard house call showing his feet you mentioned and his wheels for another army score and his balance yeah jacoby fired the buchanan's again what the bounce? <laughs> he bounces off what's a downfield blocking couple guys downfield finishing the second string guy is getting a chance to show what they can do they're playing hard they're executing their assignments and they're helping their boy jacoby buchanan get another touchdown impressive two touchdown runs of 65 yards exactly what brent davis thought he'd get out of him right <laughs> you kidding me point after up and good and jeff monkins guys on their way to their second win in two games 11 carries 106 on the ground two touchdowns 25 yards and 40 yards for jacoby buchanan all army here late in the fourth All right, Ross, they're lining up the shells, getting ready to make you jump out of your seat again over there with that cannon across across Lusk Reservoir here from the press box. And coming up next, you can join Inside College Football, our great crew down in New York, as we keep you updated on the start of the season with all the latest news right here on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Brent Stover and the gang. Brent in studio, the rest of those guys virtual, working the show with him. 11 carries, 106, two touchdowns that totaled 65 yards for Jacoby Buchanan. We got to talk to him next time we're here, Ross. He's like their home run threat. <laughs> 260 pound home run threat. That's quite a threat. Speed, size, strength, good luck tackling him. This is Chandler Whitfield. He's stopping his tracks. This Army team just relentless. In this relentless Army six rushes of 20 or more, and this one was 40, Ross, on the house call. And, and watch the downfield blocks by Colin Check and Danny. Right there and right there. Yep. These guys are 10 yards downfield. Watch the finish here. Excellent job by Colin Check and an unbelievable job as well by Vache Danny. Yep. That is Army West Point football. Mm -hmm. Total effort all the time downfield. That's exactly what Jeff Munkin will highlight when they watch the film tomorrow or Monday. That's the effort they have to have, especially next week against a really good BYU team. You are right on with that, my friend. Jeremy Hunt now back in a quarterback out of the shotgun. Javid Myers at the running back spot. Pass over the middle. Flag comes in. Caleb John was on the coverage on the back of Jordan Carroll, the sophomore out of Forney, Texas. Ball be placed in the spot of the foul, includes an automatic first down. Left hand is tugging him right there, and then the right hand hooks him. <laughs> Probably could have called interference or hold with either one. Kind of hugging him up and tackling him. You know, the thing is, he had such good coverage, he didn't need to do that. You just got to be smarter than that and know you're in pretty good position. Make the receiver have to make a play. After the penalty, they go from the 32, swinging out. And forced out of bounds at the 40 yard line. The catch made by Jevin Frett. First time we've called his name today, Cam Jones. Cameron Jones forced him out of bounds. Second and two coming up. And this is good work for Jeremy Hunt. Yeah. You know, the other quarterback, the junior college transfer, they have not decided on who will be the full season starter. So this is an opportunity for him to show the coaches what he can do. Again, for people that weren't watching earlier, they missed so many practices with the hurricane and COVID that their head coach said, we, neither guy beat out the other guy. We didn't have enough time. Yeah. Just couldn't get it done. And that one should have been intercepted. I think and it was. Broughton comes up with it. Marquel Broughton, another turnover. It was picked off. Wow. So Hunt will head back to the sidelines with 5.02 left. Two turnovers for ULM. And Marquel Broughton hangs on and makes the play for Army's defense. I've been
Those cannons are ready to make you jump out of your seat again. They're all over the place. Army football. Proud to be supported by Verizon today. That is to the left of our broadcast booth. That cannon up there on top of Fort Putnam. Six takeaways, two today. Giving up one touchdown, a six yard pass. In the first half, they took one back on Radigan's pick six, 43 yard return. Jamel Jones remains in the game at quarterback. Good pick up there of about six yards. So we're inside of five to go. It's a 30 point lead for Army. And this game was it was 14 seven back in the first half. It was it was a close game but ULM just hasn't been able to do anything here offensively. The two keys were how ULM bungled the end of the first half clock mm -hmm. management to get Army that field goal to go up by two scores and the fake punt yep. two biggest plays of the game. Mm -hmm. Army looking to run this thing out and go to two and zero on the season Jones. To get the first down there Mason Hussman fifth year guy up front for ULM. They will play in two weeks ULM that is on a week off to do some work and you mentioned it we've all talked about it they had to shut their program down due to COVID on their team then they had to deal with Hurricane Laura they lost power on their campus for three days some places down there still don't have power in the areas surrounding Monroe Louisiana. Bank from Jones. To midfield. And second half possessions the punt after the three and out. And the fake punt on the second drive yep. led to the touchdown and they've been, they've been illuminated in red since. I'm a little surprised and now Jamel Jones comes out. Yeah. Now they're going to bring in another quarterback. I was just about to say I'm a little surprised yeah. that they're giving Jamel Jones all these carries. Yeah. It's the last Great. thing you want is a backup quarterback to get hurt in garbage time. Yeah. So we said that to each other during the break like I'm surprised he's still in there. It's the youngster that was in there last week the sophomore out of Fulton Maryland running the show now. Maurice Belong. Atkins is in the game getting some time at fullback. He came in the game late last week. He took one in for a touchdown for Army late in stage of the football game. It's so good for the morale of the whole program yeah. when you get all these guys in the football game like this. You know, these are the guys that are second and third string. They're probably not going to play against BYU and, and Cincinnati in some of these games, but. This is a chance for their parents to see him on TV and for them to get a chance to play at Mikey Stadium. Army at 420 yards on the ground, 340 a week ago. That was a problem from the snap there for Ballon. Bad snap there. Bellin keeps it. That's the kind of stuff that Jeff Munkin can't stand. Right. Not able to get the snap Under was going to give it Ellis to Buchanan. Buchanan ends up hitting him from behind. That couldn't feel real Enjoyed good. <laughs> but they were going to give it to Buchanan. He was probably going to fall forward mm -hmm. no for a couple play. yards to get the first two. down and seal this game. Instead, they're going to have to go for it here on fourth down. Uh, did, I think they brought Jones back Jones. in the game to Under try to get center. this first down and end it. They've got Atkins in at fullback. You're right, they did. Tossed near side, bobbled, got it in first down. And that should do it. To the 41 yard line. The pitch to I John Marshall. I John Marshall the, the pitch there down. in the first down. First time we've called his name this season with 90 seconds and counting left in the ball game. I'm going to give Brent Davis credit there again. Nobody thought they'd have a toss there. No, I mean, you're thinking fullback, maybe quarterback. The last thing you're thinking is a short side toss there. And I still don't think we'll see Jamel Jones running again. I don't think they want to take that chance. I think you'll see a handoff here to the fullback. Probably two more of them to end this game. Right. There's one. And that's Atkins. To the 36-yard line goes Anthony Atkins. Kevin Pointer, he has played a heck of a football game. That's encouraging on the defensive side for them, him being so young. 
three-pointer. He has been impressive from the start of this game. He has been all over the place. Never played before. Right. Coach Stoker told us a little bit. Didn't know how he would perform. Was anxious to see it. Now we got another quarterback in the game. Brent Davis always keeping me on my toes. For the Black Knight. Cade Ballard, the freshman from yep. Greenville, Tennessee. From Greenville, Tennessee. He's in the game now. They're all getting a run. Atkins right side, and that's going to be the last play of this game. On the carry. Under 20 seconds to go. Seth Mason on the tackle. Jeff Munkin will trot out. He and Matt Viator know each other going back to Munkin's days at Georgia Southern. And Jeff Munkin and his men are now 2 and 0 on the season. With BYU coming to Mikey next Saturday. A 30 point win for Army. As they take out the ULM Warhawks. Louisiana Monroe. It would be hard then to be much more impressed by how this Army Black Knight football team has started the season. After a disappointing season a year ago, mm -hmm. to come out and have two 30 plus point victories mm -hmm. against a couple of other FBS programs that, I mean, these are solid 500. Group of five conference teams, Middle Tennessee and Sun Belt. They're both usually right around the mark for trying to go to a bowl game, and Army just handled both of them. Right. So Army heads to the north end zone, to our left from our broadcast position. That's where they will stand for the West Point alma mater. ULM will make their way down there as well. Jacoby Buchanan is going to be smiling tonight. He'll be smiling for a while after that performance. Outstanding performance. A career day for him. With a couple of touchdowns and over 100 yards. And now it looks like we are. The band was in the north end zone last week. Now they're in the south. 2020, man. 2020 problems, I'm telling you. Well, what's funny is, is there was about 20 guys Jeez. that ran to the south end zone. Yep. And then they looked back, and everybody else is in the north end zone. Some of these guys have just run 200 Jeez. yards. They're going to be gassed. Oh, boy. They're always keeping you on your toes. So the band is there. They are socially distanced, as you can see. And the Warhawks in there as well, and Christian Anderson in there. He took a wicked shot from Webster. Not sure if he'd come back, but he did. Strong game out of him. Here is the Army West Point alma mater. Watch and listen. We'll take a timeout and come back with more from Mikey Stadium after this. Well, the Corps Cadets, approximately 4,300. They got an afternoon out in the sun watching their Army team improve to 2-0 with a 30-point win over the Warhawks of ULM to improve to 2-0. Let's get down to Tina, who's standing by with a victorious head coach, Jeff Munkin. All right, Ben, thank you. Coach Munkin, at halftime, you weren't happy with the team's execution. But to start the half, you saw that fake punt, and it was executed perfectly on fourth and ten. What made you call that play? Well, we, we had the rare opportunity. We got a chance to see their punt block team out there a few times. 
I just soon not punt and find out. But uh, we just saw a look that we thought was favorable and, and called the play. Unfortunately, we executed correctly, and it's a big play in the game. And then from there, we saw Jacoby Buchanan with the two long touchdown runs and some great downfield blocking. So what changed offensively so that they were executing properly and getting the results? I thought all, of, all the B-backs ran really hard. I thought our team ran hard. Um, we, they were getting a lot of carries. Uh, ULM kind of took the perimeter away. We weren't, we, even on the, the, the called uh, option plays where there's a chance to get it pitched, they were kind of taking that away. And uh, just it became a fullback game and those guys ran really hard. And those were two nice runs by Jacoby. Some great blocks down the field just to shield guys and get them out of the way. After Christian Anderson went down in the first half, we saw him start the second half. How is his health moving forward after playing that little bit in the second half again? Oh, he's fine. He got hit on the hand, and they just they wanted to get an x-ray to make sure there wasn't anything wrong. And he was fine. That's why we were able to put him back in the game. And just one touchdown allowed by the defense. Again, what did you think of their performance? Oh, they did a, they did a really nice job. We gave up a couple more big plays this week than we did last week. And, uh, and and we just we let them get some throws down the field, which cost us. But I, I thought the guys really did a great job. It's nice to see it, uh, us get a, a turnover there, Marquell getting that interception there at the end. Coach, congratulations on your second straight win. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Ben. Thank you, Tina, and thanks to Jeff Monken as well. Beautiful sight. It always is here at West Point. Beautiful West Point Saturday. Once again, our final score: Army 37. Seven, they take out ULM. For Ross Tucker, Tina Savassi, all of our crew, my name is Ben Holden. Hope you enjoy the broadcast. It's been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Now to New York City inside college football. Brent Stover and the gang, so long, and thanks for watching from West Point.